happily pumping the ball forward to Ian Rickman. The big spearhead booted nine, and with a shrug of the shoulders, Port's season was over, as a five-match winning run carried the town into the preliminary. Preston began a seven-game winning streak against Coburg in round 11, but it counted for nothing in the second semi, as the Burgers had it in the bag by quarter time. Even in the wet, they displayed the ball handling that had seen them top of the table for all but four weeks of the season. Next stop, the grand final. Things went from bad to worse for the Bull Ants as they bit the mud by 93 points. Preston's one moment of joy came in the last quarter when Jamie Shaw got the one goal he required for his century. But even in their congratulations, the faces of the Preston players told the story. The man at the centre of the court case controversy began things brightly enough in the first quarter of the preliminary as Preston kicked 3-3 and kept Williamstown scoreless. But led by the mountainous Barry Round, the Seagulls had a nine-goal second quarter to snuff out Preston's hopes. And when he wasn't kicking them himself, he was making space for others who invariably produced the goods as Willie marched into their third grand final in four years. As I said, two fine teams, two outstanding coaches in Phil, Phil Cleary and Terry Wheeler, and each team boasting a joint winner of this year's JJ List, Liston medal in Gary Sheldon and Brett McTaggart. Now, Williamstown's history goes way back to 1884, since when the oldest club in the VFA has won 13 premierships, including two previous grand final wins over Coburg, the most recent in 1986. As for Coburg, they've been in the association since 1925. They've won six premierships, but in eight previous finals games against Williamstown, Coburg has only managed to win just one. So to see if Phil Cleary and his men can improve on that rather dismal finals record against Williamstown, let's join your commentary team led by Peter G. Thank you, Charles. Well, about the only thing that there is agreement on is that the final result of the match won't be known till very close to that final siren. Both uh, Terry and Phil think it will go down to the wire. One thing is for certain, and that is that the VFA crowds have embraced Windy Hill as the grand final venue. A fantastic turnout for this double header because we've already had one premiership decided today, and that went the way of the Oakley Devils. They were four games clear on top of the ladder all season, and they've gone on and beaten Sunshine today, who finished in fourth place a great performance by Ron Brown's boys but Brian Quirk is the successful coach the second second division uh, premiership for Oakley they ended up winning by a clear cut 50 points well, let's go down to ground level. We've told you the conditions are much better than the uh, three previous Saturdays for the finals so far. Ross Booth is the man on the spot. Good afternoon, Ross. Good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it is good. The weather quarter behind me looks OK. I haven't brought the umbrella. But Terry Wheeler showed his players a motivational tape of ABC highlights. Phil Cleary wanted full-on aggression, but no reports. And an omen, Bob Hawke in Coburg's rooms. OK, let's take a look at the Coburg lineup. Uh, Peter Darby, after six weeks out through injury, uh, Phil hasn't uh, risked him, so Kakura and Taranto are interchange. As expected, positional changes galore. Major ones, Littler to fullback, Ingram to centre half back, Reynolds goes to centre half forward, and Nimmo to the back pocket. Well, in 1986, Coburg were red-hot favourites for the grand final, and even though the Lions have lost only four games this season, does Phil Cleary think his team go into today's match as favourites? I wouldn't think so. I think most people are saying we're not the favourite. We're quite happy with that. I don't think it matters whether you're favourite or not. Just going to be on the day how we play and uh, our preparation's been good. I do know there's an air of keenness and confidence about the club and I can say it's quite different from 86. Williamstown will line up as in the press. Larry Simmons is the unlucky man. He hasn't made it onto the interchange bench. Uh, Darren Rousel, who kicked four in the reserves last week, comes in as the bench sitter with Mark Kennedy. Coach Terry Wheeler believes his team's cutthroat preparation will hold them in good stead against Coburg. I think our preparation coming to this final has been very good in that we've been tested all the way through. We had to win our last four home and away games, which we did. Uh, we had to win the first semi-final against Port Melbourne. We had to win the preliminary final against Preston. We've been tested in finals type football now for over six weeks. Coburg's last six weeks include two weeks of non-football and playing two of the bottom sides in Paran and Box Hill in the final two rounds of the season. The question is, you know, are they ready for us? We're certainly ready for them. Teams and officials lined up for the national anthem. <laughs>
time for players lined up like that, but also for the umpires. And the men in charge today are Ross Walker and John Harvey. And there you see a section of the big crowd here at Windy Hill this afternoon. Well, it's a bit of a crowd in our commentary position, but uh, who better to join me this afternoon for commentary? Ross Booth, who you've already met this afternoon. There's Terry Wheeler, man in charge of Williamstown's fortunes. Bill Cleary, non-playing coach, of course. But up here, we've got plenty of coaches in the box. As usual, Sam Kekovich is with me, and it's my pleasure to welcome Peter White and to ABC television viewers. Peter, of course, unsuccessful coach of Preston this year as far as a grand final is concerned, but congratulations on what you did with them. Oh, I guess you'd like to be out here coaching today. Much prefer to be uh, out there coaching, but uh, this will do for second best. Yeah. All right, Sammy, <laughs> uh, I'll put it on you. You've got the Coburg colours on there, that tie. Do you think they're going to win it? Well, I'm in a quandary. I've been in the quandary all week trying to evolve who will be victorious here today, Peter. But I did get a phone call from the respective clubs pleading with me not to select them because my record <laughs> over the year has been abysmal in terms of selecting winners. But I just feel Coburg will... Uh, Obviously, endeavour to erase the bitter memories of '86 when they went down victors by, when Williamstown evolved victors by 13 points in somewhat controversial circumstances. Brad Nimmo winning the toss for Coburg. He, of course, played in their last Premiership side, 1979, and they're going with the breeze in this first term down to the school end. Yes, Peter. I just believe that uh, Coburg will endeavour to erase the bitter memories of '86 when they lost to Williamstown by 13 points in somewhat controversial circumstances. The current coach at Coburg, Phil, was responsible when he, uh, for an indiscretion he created that day, was sent off the field. And in fact, Coburg had a stranglehold in the game at that point in time. But uh, with his departure, Williamstown got back in the game and, as we know, panned our victors by 13 points. But what a wonderful game it is going to be, Peter. I'm going to say the number of clashes and the highlights Rickman, the Littlers, Round, Nimmo. Obviously, they've had to look at their side very closely, Coburg, haven't they, in terms of looking after Round. Nimmo was originally. Uh, placed at centre-half forward, but they've obviously looked at their side and put him in the back pocket to offset the uh, ascendancy of Barry around their forward pocket. Yes, yeah, so, Sam, I think that uh, that's a good move on Phil Cleary's part. By uh, Nimmo is a, a former VFL player, and he's uh, played in the back pocket quite regularly uh, with uh, VFL sides, Essendon and North Melbourne. I think he's the man with the experience to handle round, and I think Little has probably got the pace. It'll be interesting to see whether Phil follows the lead that we used last week on uh, Rickman, keeping him down to two goals. Andy Plowman played him from about 10 yards in front and uh, did a very good job. But uh, a lot will depend on the centre bounds here. I think uh, uh, Wiedemann and Kershaw will be the keys for each of their sides, where Williamstown will have a, an advantage that uh, if Wiedemann does get on top, they'll have uh, Barry Round to throw in there. If they can cut off the supply to Rickman and round, then uh, Coburg are well in with a chance. And of course, the other part of the following division, Peter, too, Angwin and Smith, great Ruck Rovers, as we've seen during the course of the year. Carl and Allison, great Rovers. The centre line clash is also going to be very important with McTaggart. So all in all, a really... Uh it's got all the ingredients for a great game, hasn't it? There's not one area where you can really pinpoint one side and say, well, it really has got the ascendancy over the other. It's so line ball, isn't it? Well, there's the Prime Minister, Ross Booth Tolvis, who's in the Coburg rooms. He thought it might have been an omen. It might be an omen that he's going to be in the Williamstown rooms after the match. But uh, it's great to have the Prime Minister here, the Premier here as well. He, of course, is a great supporter of your side, Preston. Uh, Peter. But, uh, all right, which way do you think it's going to go? Put your neck out. I think Williamstown. Sam? Well, I've got to stick with my old mate, Phil. Coburg for Sam. I think the first ten minutes will tell us whether Coburg can win this game. Williamstown, I think, are a team that you don't write off at any stage. But I think if Coburg can get the ball rolling, get that team play going, then they're going to be very hard to beat. It's going to be a classic grand final. And oh, it's yeah. umpire... Ross Walker, who has the ball in hand, and he's wired for sound, of course. Ross Booth is with us. Which way do you think it's going to go, Roscoe? Well, you haven't told us who you think, Peter. Did no. I say Coburg? <laughs> I think Sitting William... on the fence again. Ten minutes time. Will you know. well, this be the traditional VFA opening? Let's see. I'm sure it will. <laughs> so it's Coburg going from left to right in this first term. Uh, right to left, rather, and it's uh, Wiedemann who gets them forward. Almost. Bayern! Reynolds and not quite. Williams out from full forward. The big fella burst through two. Well smothered. Good. Murphy had a great final Bayern! series. Ingram, a few nerves. Carl gets the free kick caught by Reynoldson. Right there, Angwin right there. watching him very closely. Right there. Lindsay Carl puts the Seagulls into attack. Round won't get there in time. Not on the full anyway. The big fellow handles it well. 
Nimmo could have taken possession there. Tried to set up uh, Wiedemann, and he'll now do the ruck work. Interesting to note, Peter, too, once Williamstone got possession and picking it towards round, how quickly Wiedemann got down there to assist. I think he'll do that job all day, getting down near the centre-half forward position to cut off the young oh. supply there. Williamstown in attack, but Ingram gets it clear for the Lions. Out onto centre wing. There's Reynolds and Seven trying to knock it forward. A lot of pressure early. And Murphy played a great sec uh, prelim final. Gives it out. Look at that tackling. And finally it's Langan getting it forward. But Di Martino comes out. Spills it. Good support there from Del Rey. Back in defence. And the ball moved quickly down with Coburg kicking with the breeze. Yes, a few tense moments at this stage. Peter, you've been through it all before. Yes, Thanks. I think players on both sides, Sam, will be trying to assert their authorities and uh, get, the, get on top of their opponent psychologically. Kershaw being held off by Reynoldson. Oh, it's going to run through. First goal of the day. Scored by Coburg. And it came out of a quick piece of passage out of the pack. Trying to pick up who kicked the goal. We call Reynoldson up. <laughs> He was in the ruck, but Reynolds was it who came in and uh, took it out after Reynolds and took Kershaw out of business. I think it was Reynolds here we see it on replay, Peter. There he is. Yes. One of those goals that every side needs early in the game. Right. Peter Darby type goal from earlier in the year, bounced through. So Lions have first score on the board. Here they go again, Langan over to Ede. Bit of fumbling by Nimmo. And a spot of bother. It is Langan back to help out. Pastore sends uh, that Kirby player over the fence. That's Alan Ede playing his 100th game. And a fine player for the Lions. Pack stand there here at Windy Hill. There's big Barry Round rucking with Mark Wiedemann. Oh, over the top is Nilsson. Good work, but Nimmo gets it. On the centre wing, who's got the pace? Rakavolis, 29. Oh! Down he goes. Murphy got into his back. Six points, first goal on the board to the Coburg side, the Lions, Kim Kershaw on left of screen. Interesting to note that uh, Reynolds is doing a bit of rough the work ball. there. Wiedemann's hanging back. There's Reynolds in front ball. of Kershaw, down to ground. Ball. Sleverson ball. gets a good side knock bump. Out, out. No, can't get that ball. out. Knock Holding out. the ball. Must she did a lot of valuable work up for against you guys last ball. week, Peter. Carry Kershaw into the breeze towards Nilsson. Off the ground from McTaggart. Very open forward line. Sheldon put under pressure by Rickman. Did well though. And here's Lickler. Plenty of open spaces on these wide wings here at Windy Hill. In fact, the ground is the same length as Port Melbourne where we've played all our television football this year, but it is in fact seven uh, metres wider. Billy Kakur there on left of screen, interchange player for the Lions. Interesting to note too, Peter, that Williamstown have gone in with Kennedy. Yes. The opening minutes of this round. I tipped that, uh, Sam, as I said to you before the game, he played very well last week, and I'm not surprised he's out there. Quite a good uh, goer. Williams. Now they're number 14, Murphy. Good tackle on him by two Coburg players. Williams is caught well by little Richie Rayburn. Pastore. Tried to find Kershaw. The big fellow ends up with it. Here's McTaggart. Became a father for the first time during the week. The Liston Trophyist. Wiedemann the spoil. Harbinson. Back in board to Weed. Out wide he's got Ingram. Bounce nicely for Bear. McTaggart not letting him out of his sights. Good football, Ken Ingram. And then it wouldn't bounce for him. Wheeler. He too has played a top final series in defence. Smith would have got the free kick advantage call. But all Coburg back there. Get there Mark Wiedemann. Boys. Leaves it for Littler. Harbison. <laughs> Plenty of loose men. One of them is Alan E. Steadying things down. Glorious sunshine on the back of Eid, VFA player, 100th game for Coburg this afternoon. Three against one here, and Big Kimbo takes the mark. Kershaw at half back. Off to Delray. Yes. Third possession for uh, Big Kim Kershaw, playing well in the ruck. This is dangerous for Williamstown. Grabbed by Berg, outside 50, shot on goal. Is long, is good! Second goal. Poster Ross. Well, it happened yesterday, they've got a goal, so I thought it might have today. 
In all fairness, your vision was obscured there by the Very pole that beam in our way. I must confess, I was all up in arms myself. I thought it was <laughs> going through. <laughs> well, I've got the breeze, and they're doing doing it well. How strong is the breeze, Sam? Oh, I would say it'd be a four or five goal breeze. Rakavolis favoured here. Coached it better than Pastore. Perhaps he didn't think his fullback would get so much distance with that kick into the breeze. Murphy. He's played a top game, uh, Peter Waitman, in the uh, final series. Played very well, uh, Peter, yes. But it's interesting to note that uh, Ingram's doing a lot of running off the half back line. Uh, he's on Nielsen, and Wiedemann's dropping back and picking up Nielsen. It's exposing King Shaw's lack of pace a little bit. Here is that man, Mark Wiedemann. 30 years since the Premiership has come the way of the Wiedemann family. 58 for Collingwood. I saw his father downstairs too, Peter. Still looks sartorial. Hasn't changed. The years have been very, very kind to him. Rennett's across to Weed. Oh, good mark. Good mark under pressure. Alan Harbison, he played in that 79 uh, Premiership side. Weatherall. I thought there was going to be Who some confusion Danny? there. Be careful, Danny. Be careful, Danny. Weatherall inside 50 with the fine. four or five goal breeze at his back. Will have no difficulty with distance. Kick six in the second semi-final. Right there. Let's start it out right and let the Sal Wester drag it in. Well, he's done exactly that. Second major comes up for the Coburg Lions at the seven-minute mark. And what a great goal it was too, Peter. And more important, will give them a tremendous amount of confidence, especially Brett Weatherall, who we know is a focal, forward, focal point in uh, Coburg's forward structure, him and Williams. And it's vitally important to get one of those early ones. Gives you enormous confidence, doesn't it, Peter? That grab and a touch and, more importantly, a goal. That's right, Sam. I think they'll have to watch uh, Weatherall. He's a very efficient user of the ball. He doesn't need to get many kicks to uh, put a score on the board. So umpire David Holsworth down to that scoreboard end, adjudicated that a goal, no worries there. There's a penalty free going to Williamstown. Kershaw takes it, got a man loose out here. Over the head though is the pass, Pastore. And there's Alan Lee. he's very busy in these first 10 minutes. Chips it short and finds Angwin. He's a left footer, that favours him. Into the centre, too long, McTaggart. Oh, paid it down for one. No advantage there. Sleverson has to bring it back. To McTaggart now rounds uh, too far back. Rickman gives the lead. It's a good one. Bounces just in front of him, as you saw. Wiedemann, good work. Quick hand pass. And gee, the lines are looking good. Kershaw on the way. Spoil. Infringed against by Reynolds. Yeah, they want to adopt the policy of bypassing him, Peter, don't they? Because he will keep them out. It appears as though both Ruckman are setting themselves at centre half back, repelling attacks. Wiedemann and Kershaw. Pastore. Straight into Rennitz, gets it back. Oh, plenty of loose seagulls. Lindsay Carl. Oh, good kick into the breeze. Top goal. Typical Rovers goal, Sam. Yes. Well, he is a classic Rover, Carl. He does a lot of work, not only around the ground, but at the base of packs. And he's got that touch of class, and he's, as we saw there, the capacity to finish off his work. And that will give Williamstown a tremendous lift. Certainly got all the ingredients for a great game, hasn't it? I don't think the margin come five o'clock will be that great. No, at this stage, Coburg are teaming very well, but then they've got the aid of the breeze, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Lindsay Carl picked four goals in the 86 Premiership, and he's their second uh, top goal scorer this year behind Rickman with 31 now for the season. Rennett's battling hard in there. Oh, no chance! King McTaggart not giving him any quarter. Sam, I watched the uh, replay of the first round match, Williamstown Coburg, um, and uh, you slipped, Ian Rickman slimmed well, down a lot. I thought you might have gone the other way. <laughs> no, Rickman has. In fact, he's been. Just watched this pasture play. Delray, good work out of defence. Wiedemann with a tap. Backwards, that's clever. Sheldon, under pressure, caught with the ball, is the Liston Trophy winner. Good decision. And the tackler is Carl. Wait, Gary! Back a metre, Gary! Back a metre! Right back! Rickman leading to the pocket. Carl looks for him. Littler's with him. Round backing back. Good raving by Smith off the pack. Number 11. There he is. Good skills on the left foot, but just wide. All clear. Just reverting back to Rickman. First, mate. Ross. He has slimmed down a lot, and he's become a great player for Williamstown over the latter part of the year, and he's an experienced and proven finals campaigner. And as we know, on this right ground, he won't need too many opportunities because he's such a prodigious kick. 
So they're going to have to keep a very, He's very tight playing, check on him. Shepard. Coming up to the ten and a half minute mark. Free kicks, five to Williamstown, Coburg, nil so far. Here's Langan. Support from Nimmo, also Rennets. This is that running game I was talking about. Beautiful delivery up forward. Great mark. Pulled in by Allison. He's been one of their goers all season. Allison's 60 metres out from goal. Reynolds couldn't haul it in. Here's Weatherall. Support from Angwin. Rakavolis. Oh, he throws them by going onto the right and gets too much hook on it. That's an interesting stat. Uh, five free kicks to Williamstown, nil to Coburg, and Coburg seems to have had all the play. I was about to say that, Peter. They've certainly got... They've always got support, haven't they, at the base of the pack. Players running off each other. Yeah, the very quick hands out of the pack. It uh, catches the opposition off guard. Di Martino kicks to the defensive side and strong mark to Murray Nilsson. And he's got Kennedy loose on centre wing. Into the breeze go the Seagulls. Chip to Di McTaggart. And they've moved this ball up very well into the square. Rickman at the back, Littler at the front. Good mark, Littler. Positioning himself uh, very well in front of Rickman. Well, we've seen him before, Peter. He won't be frightened to use his judgment. Littler. Rickman infringing over the mark and 50 metres. Yes. Well spotted, Ross. But just getting back to Littler. He certainly doesn't get overawed by the occasion, does he? No, no. He's uh, back himself in. Keeps his eyes on the ball. And look at that chipping it square. That's typical Coburg's play. Kicked across the ground. Get a loose man going. And there it is. Rennett's over to Harbinson. No one in front of him. If, he can, if it will fall for him. Now it does. Rennett's in support. He's through. No, he's not. Good tackle. Reynolds on the left. Now on the right. That's a goal. That's a great piece of play from Coburg. It's typical of the way they go about their game. They set it up, didn't they? Virtually across that half forward line, Peter. Went across goal. Found the loose player and just drew the defence. There was some inept defence here. We'll see it on replay here. Almost broke through. Now this should never have should never have broken that tackle, Reynolds. Well, the tackle, in fact, wasn't even executed. But he got around far too easily, didn't he? Certainly. Could have been a free kick to Coburg as well. It was a bit high there, I think, too, Sam. And the ball straight 13 out. minutes gone. 13 points the difference. 13 ball. points was Williamstown's victory in the 86 final. Reynolds pumps it forward for Williams. Oh, is he going to be free kicked? No, there was no push there. Bullshit! No, stood, his stood his ground. As we've known, Peter, we've seen him a number of occasions. A strong boy, Williams. And one grab too, which is good to see. He, he seemed to have read the, read the flight of the ball much better. Dimitino was in the right spot to be in front, right but uh, let himself under the ball, and Williams saw his opportunity. Stood his ground and right uh, should result in a goal. Drilled through. David Williams gets the Lions fourth. And he's kicked 29 goals in the last six matches, 30 now, so he's averaging five a match coming into the finals. They couldn't have wished for a better start, could they, Coburg, Peter? It's uh, interesting, Sam, that uh, Williamstown have started like this in uh, both their other finals efforts, and uh, so we'll, I guess we'll just have to sit back and see if they can rebound. Oh, I'm not overly perturbed by that. You know, we all seen Willie right. claw their way back into games and eventually wear the opposition down, but, you know, grand finals just bother me. 19 points to the Lions, but kicking with the breeze. Bayon! Strength at the centre. McTaggart dispossessed. Allison on the left. Williams over his head. Di Martino grabs it. Ooh, clash between two seagulls there, Delroy. Cousins too. Cousins are they? No exchange of words. Fair bit, of enthusiasm. Cousins, are they? <laughs> fair, bit, fair bit of enthusiasm there, but uh, not a lot of science. So no score. Out of bounds, forward pocket left. Rennett, Sleverson will clear it. Well, interesting, uh, the hip and shoulders coming in there from the Coburg players. I think Phil Cleary was very revved up by some of the comments of Terry Wheeler, that perhaps his side weren't physical enough. And he said we were determined to show that wasn't the case today. Rakavolas had to handball in desperation. Kennedy lost it. Here's Rakavolas again. There's another one. Well, well, certainly erring under pressure, the Williamstown defence. At this stage, uh, Coburg want the ball much more than Williamstown. Much more desperate in their attempts right, and Jerry. more sure in their ball handling. 
quick hands out of the pack to a player running past. Obviously, a lot of communication out there. And the Prime Minister there enjoying this brilliant start by Coburg. Five goals in 15 minutes. In the lead, 25 points now. So can Kim Kershaw left the screen hold this? Barry Round there on the ruck, that's significant. Smith. Hand pass finds McTaggart. He's got a lot to beat, and he's beaten them. On the left foot, Rayburn White, who I don't think's had a possession. He's under pressure too. Gives it off to Laurie Taylor. He's been quiet. I guess William Sound have not been forward on many occasions. They haven't, Ross, but Richie Rayburn's one guy that they'll be looking forward to to give him a bite and to break up the congestion. At the ball! At he's had a ball. wonderful year so far and a wonderful finals campaign. Round against... The weed loses it. Knock it out. Langer. Play on. Play on. Angle it. it out. Loves nothing better than the hard ball. Sheldon. Oh. Cruel bounce. Kershaw had the height. Harbinson takes it away. Rakovolis and Kennedy again. <laughs> Taggart goes down. Too many numbers here. The Lions. Good shepherding from Reynoldson. He's still. Harbinson puts. Laying it under pressure, but they've got support. Rennett. Smithy! Open spaces at half forward. No mark. Oh, oh, that's a bad decision. Di Martino had his hands on that, and you're right to wait go off there, your head right. Wait, wait. Would you have played that? I thought I would have. Well, oh. I'd like to see that again on replay. That again on replay. Definitely <laughs> stolen by Dave Williams. No. Umpires don't have that, that uh, benefit, Sam. We're a bit far away here, Sam. We didn't watch it on the uh, screen there. Right so. there, Robert. No, Ross always likes to throw a few hurdles in front of me, Peter. You'll get used to that. Run! <laughs> it does the uh, backspin, but over the boundary line first. Well, here, here it is. We see. Yes, I think there was another pair of hands touched that part of gaining uh, Mr. Williams's grasp. Wheeler in desperation. Angwin. Langen. I must agree with you, Sam. No doubt there. Perhaps, You'll get on, Pete. <laughs> Perhaps Coburg feel more at home there. Strip's very close to Essendon, isn't it? <laughs> yes, they might think that they're... Uh... Dark blue instead of black. That's the only difference. Robert DiMartino still favouring this defensive side. Nilsson took the previous mark, but thumped away right by Bear Ingram that time. Off the ground right by there. Burke. Right and he's found the Angle. Right there. Right there, Should get the distance. From the 50... And the accuracy. Goal number six to Coburg. I think the interesting point uh, to note at this stage at the half-back line of uh, Coburg in Harvest and Ingram and Ede uh, are combining very well with Langan in the centre and the Rovers. They're all, every time a Coburg player gets possession, you've got three players giving three options either side of the pack. You're right, Pat. He was seen on replay. Yeah, we can't let you suck in, Brian. Be careful. That's the well case. executed kick okay. to register their sixth. Well, the way the goals have been scored, you think both teams have uh, played a lot of football here at Windy Hill. They're using the breeze beautifully to swing them through. <laughs> Langer. Rakavolis caught by Wheeler. Pushed in the back. Says umpire ha uh, Harvey, and he says it's going to be that way all day. Rakavolis. High one for Reynoldson or Williams from behind. Oh! Murphy. McTaggart. Loose now. Rickman back in defence. Smith back there at full forward. Oh! Littler beats him. The roving from Nilsson. Sheldon under pressure. He gets shepherding from Littler. And they're teaming beautifully, the Lions. Two metres, eight, eight. Wiedemann oh! now half back. Nimmo. The skipper drives them to half forward. Mom. Burke had to go defensive. Kennedy. Again, the Lions have the numbers. Nimmo and E. Two most experienced men, but someone more experienced is Barry Round to Terry Wheeler. Mom. Pulling for the free is Smith. And the umpires are going to only pay them if they're well and truly deserved today, I think. Exactly, Peter. A couple of interesting positional moves by Williams Town. They got Smith at full forward and Rickman on the ball. Hey, hey. An endeavour to get them get rolling. 
Yes, I think the uh, the discipline of the Coburg side, Phil's got them set up very well. They're uh, they're really creating a lot of problems for the forwards and the Williamstown side. They've got nowhere to lead. Great skills by Allison. One-handed grab off to Langan. Oh, but big Kershaw in the way. Back and made up! Craig Vocal complaining about a couple of decisions against Williamstown, but six free kicks. Look at the mark to Rennitz! Superb! Six free kicks to one. Rennitz quickly on. Out comes Williams. On! Gets an unfavourable bounce. Di Martino well tackled. Paddle on. Over the top. Dangerous. Reynoldson. Oh, sidestep. At oh. goal. Good tackle. And finally the Seagull defence oh, does something know. right. He's down with the ball. You're Danny right. Delroy. Right. Watch the scrap. Isn't oh, magic? Great mark. When you're hot, you're hot. Seventh possession to Reynolds, too. And you're a very valuable player. Well, Delray saving... Willie's Bacon oh. down there. Kershaw too tall. Murphy has to get rid of it quickly. McTaggart. Two against one again. Ingram is 18. 19 is Nilsson. Great pickup. Rennitz uses the body beautifully. Langan. Pastoria is right on him. Just feel at this early stage, Pete, they really uh, seem to have a sentence in pace, don't they? They do, they do. Uh, I think the uh, the way they're playing the game, Kobe, they're forcing the even the Williamstown defence to kick oh. wide and it, uh, not getting any uh, benefit out of their disposal. There, Ingram. Right there, Ed, play on! Kenny Ingram oh, centres it. Oh, look at this. Angwin again, free space. Wheeler goes the wrong way. Angwin to the square. Oh, big Kim Kershaw. Oh, no, no. Thank goodness they've got him. Oh. Dangerous looking hand pass to Murphy. Now Rickman down from full forward. Oh, too slow. Well done, Alan Ede. The kick not so good. Oh, have Williamson mucked this up? They look uncertain. Under great pressure, cleared by Wheeler. Out to Carl. Good mark, Lindsay Carl. And they put the double whammy on Williams down there at uh, full forward. Kershaw and Di Martino looking after him. Now he's a go for the Seagulls. Taylor and Smith. Doesn't seem to be much talk out there for Williamstown. Kennedy up from the back line, and Ingram cleans up. Williamstown very uncertain in their moves, Sam. We're well, certainly not teaming very well, Peter. And by comparison, Coburg are just doing everything right. And more importantly, as you mentioned, that half-back line, aren't they? Vigilant. They're just running the ball out of there and just setting up their forward thrust every time. Giving the players options. To the Seagull fans' delight, Sleverson gets a free kick. Wiedemann. Sheldon. Oh, he's given it away. Carl. The little fellow drives them up to within 20 metres of goal. The 2-11, Smith front position. Littler happy to see it go over. That's a concerning sign for Williamstown. Smith, as we all know, is a wonderful player, but they're really dependent upon him having a big one. I don't think he's had a possession yet. And he's moved to full forward. Rickman out of the ball. There's Rickman off the ground, but wide. <laughs> He did it last week against you, if I think uh, I recall correctly, Pete, through a heap of players. When your confidence is up, you can do anything, but when the pressure's on at the moment for, for Williamstown and they're making a lot of mistakes. Short to Ede. And Burke has a break of 20 metres on Sleverson. Peter Burke into the centre, but he's going to pick out Kim Kershaw. How many marks is that, Paul? He's killing them. Four marks to Kershaw. Oh, Murphy's made a muck of that. McTaggart. Rayburn, it's better. Murphy will have to hurry. Good tackle on him. The Lions tackling is brilliant. Through comes Wheeler. Great example from the captain coach. Up to Smith. Good punch away by Littler. Rickman doing the roving. Over the right shoulder. Look at this. Just wide. Great effort, though. Yes, Russ, you are right. He's set the example, didn't he, Terry? Crashing his way through. Right there. He looks as though he's gone back to full forward now, Rickman. I don't think he'd run around the ground too well, <laughs> even though he is uh, a much fitter now, as you notice, Sam. Kaku is on for Coburg. Wouldn't be my first choice as Ruck Rover, Peter, no. The back rack of Bolas drops it. Reynolds and Bean in everything. Oh, there's Kaku, no free. Rack of Bolas trying to paddle it along. And Harbinson. Terry Wheeler. Now Murphy, Sleverson. Oh, took his eye off the ball, but Kakul got him high. Can't say I blame him taking his eye off the ball with Billy bearing in on him like that. Right out, Terry. And Rick Sleverson. Who's he got to kick to? Nilsson is the target. 19, but 
He's misjudged it. Come on, right there! Sheldon. By Gary Sheldon. Falling down badly there across that half forward line, Sam. Loose is Harbinson. Bye. Williams leads. Now doubles back. The ball goes in his path. Oh, intercepting Danny Del Rey. Mm. Oh, backs his judgment and does it well. PC. Rickman against Eid. Right Alan there. Eid comes out the oh. victor. I don't think he touched him, did he? Seventh Boom. kick coming up for Reed. Again, they swing the ball wide, and Willie aren't waking up to them. All these loose men on these big wings here. It's Angwin. Sam, I could steal one of your lines. Willie, for, Willie's forwards aren't working hard enough, are they? Well, they're not working hard enough, and not only the fact that they're working hard enough, more important, they're playing from behind. And the ball! Reynoldson in front. Oh, oh wins it well. Who can get that out? Del Rey. Good hand pass. Searching one. Finds Sleverson. Gets one high, John Harvey saw that one. There was a problem there, Ross. The reason Sleverson got caught is he, he was looking for options up the field and there wasn't a lead coming and it caused him to hesitate and uh, he was lucky to get away with that. The little Williams Billy's down. twice incurred the wrath of umpire Harvey. Incurred the wrath of Phil Cleary, that'd be worse. <laughs> I'm sure it would be. <laughs> Barry Round forced to do the roving. He's been almost possessionless. Interesting, Sam, that... Um, Williamstown seem to be playing as individuals. You're right, Peter. Oh, oh. Showing on the scoreboard, more importantly. Umpire missed that. He was obscured by the pack, to be fair. The tap from round to car was brilliant. But now the Lions have got it. It's Angwin. Reynolds oh. almost on the second round. Good oh. bump by McTaggart. That's what they need. Oh. Taylor gets it out. That's a fierce contest. Kennedy, yes. good chip to Pastori. Oh. And Rayburn is loose. Inside the 50. There he is. On to the left. She was about to say a slightly extravagant brand of football on his left foot to snap. He was only 20 yards out with the defence bearing on top of him, but to his credit, he executed it effectively. I'm sure, Sam, that you would have stopped, gone back for your kick in that situation. Well, Peter, when you've got the capacity to be kicking goals from 60 metres, I can't see why, <laughs> why one would squander an opportunity from 20. I must admit, I, think I, would, I don't think I would have played on in that situation. <laughs> That's a handy one to get back. Well, Gary Sheldon, very disappointed with himself. He hadn't let Rayburn out of his sights until then. He couldn't get the tackle in on time. Will it lift the Seagulls? Kennedy. Just too long for Rayburn. Sheldon able to spoil. Does well. Knock back to him. His volley goes to Taylor. Now on the rebound. Willie, hit back. Nilsson from 50. It's too late, Gary. Brings up a behind. I was about to say to you, Ross, <laughs> earlier when uh, McTaggart ran through hard in the Reynoldson, I thought, well, we haven't seen an example of that. If Williamstown were under the impression that Coburg might be slightly brittle, we haven't seen too many examples of them, you know, trying to expose that. Get close enough to them, Well, Sam. that's another point, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> Feed. Bit of loose marking. The weed. How can a ruckman find room on his own? He's on Kershaw, that's why. Been playing very wide of each other, those two. Searching handball, Langan. Now goes the shepherd for Billy Kakua. And good bit of work here. McTaggart got the shepherd, drills it up forward. Smith, he'll play on as well. Luther backed his judgment, went down ground, and is not punished for it. All the good play from Coburg could come undone if they allow them to score a couple of easy goals towards the end of this quarter. Exactly, Peter. It'd be Cardinal. They've monopolised possession and done everything correctly yes. to date. Williamstown, five scoring shots in six minutes, so they've recovered a bit. It's amazing that Williamstown get themselves back into games in this fashion. They don't look as though they're, they're doing anything on the ground, but all of a sudden you look at the scoreboard and they've picked up a couple and they're just behind you. No loose men this time. Ede has to kick long, and it is long. Towards Wiedemann. Oh. Got first grab. Nilsson. Tried to find the player running through. He wasn't there. Nilsson oh. does it again. Oh. Misses again with a hand pass. Rayburn, look at men loose. Kershaw is one. Down oh. goes Rayburn. Back there. Back. Have the two true Rovers in Carl and Rayburn. I think they're the two players that need to really perform to get, perform to get them back into this game. Allison and, uh, and Burke are good players, very good medium-sized players, but they're not really true rovers. And I think Rayburn and uh, and Carl have got to work very hard. They got that bit of acceleration, haven't they? Blistering pace. That's true, Sam. No, 
No free kick downfield. That's the dispute. Terry questioning the umpire's decision. Somewhat unusual. Uh, is Rickman. How often have we seen that ray burn to Rickman? From 45 metres out. And even with this tricky breeze, I suggest you can put away your glasses. Ooh, brave. Nine free kicks to one in favour of Williamstown. So the crowd haven't got much to complain about. I mean, the Williamstown crowd. Fifth kick for Ian Rickman. Hasn't found the majors yet. Oh, what a judge you are, Sam. <laughs> Isn't he just a sheer delight watching? I just love watching him kicking. Oh, and what a, couldn't have come at a more opportune time. Rather timely. The difference at quarter time. It's been a great opening. Coburg kicking with the breeze. 16-point leaders. And goal kickers all individuals up to quarter time. For the leaders, Coburg. Rennitz, Reynoldson, Weatherald. Williams, uh, Angwin and Rakavolis for Williamstown. D uh, Rickman, Carl and Rayburn. Their goal kickers up to quarter time. But it's Coburg who jumped away. Willie steadying nicely as they came into the quarter time break to cut Coburg's lead to 16 points. Today at 5 o'clock, right after our live coverage of the VFA Grand Final, the Puma Otway Classic. Australia's toughest foot race, featuring Olympians Steve Monaghetti and Brad Camp. The Puma Otway Classic, a compelling sporting documentary, today at five, right after the grand final. So, I'm like a bull in the china shop, eh? <laughs> well, welcome back. Like a bull in the china shop was uh, <laughs> Sam's statement, and he's not far wrong. But before we find out uh, from Sam what he thought of that first quarter, let's uh, bring you up to date with uh, an award that we've been running during the final series, the Mark and Goal of the Year Award. And uh, let's look at the uh, final contenders for the prize, then we'll announce our winners. It's come to advantage for Port Melbourne. Down the middle they go, driven along by Heatherton. No one at home. It's a goal! Well, he's kicked that from inside the square. Forward is Peter Waitman, what a short, taps it on cleverly in the path of Raymond. On the left, good enough. Great team goal, Ross. But mine, there's still time for him to make amends. Reese in front, oh, that's a great effort by... Polonia. Face in front of him, Shaw will still have a clean run at the ball. He's in front, off his fingers, Nicola on the back. Good work, strength, will he go? Terrific goal. Good running from Derby. It'll come up to him. He can go over the top to Williams. Oh, miracle! Oh! Put it way in the air. Underneath is Nicola Watt, almost number two. He's got it. He's got it. Oh. Traffic County. Nice sidestep. Oh, out in front here with a big jump. Oh, what a grab! Bill, that was Gee, I would have oh, been proud to get up that high. Ricky Jackson. Oh, back towards the Carly. Oh, good mark ground. Away he goes. Bugsy goes for home. Dempster. Oh, oh. terrific mark. Brilliant stuff. Get that one on tape. Kick long. There's got to be other alternatives. Well, there's an alternative here in Watts. Oh. Right Quite a superb game, hasn't it? And that skyscraper grab from John Watt was voted Mark of the Year. So uh, the quick Mark of the Year winner was John Watt. He had uh, two entries in there, so he stood a pretty good chance. And the uh, person who correctly selected that as the Mark of the Year, Georgina Morrow from Glen Waverley. Georgina wins a year's subscription to the Lifestyle Gym down there at South Melbourne. Compliments of Douglas Wade. Uh, Doug, no doubt, be watching this afternoon. Good to have you with us, Doug. A big fan of VFA football. And for the... Uh, as we see uh, Phil Cleary addressing his cr uh, troops, the goal of the year, the a &A goal of the year was Chris Niccolo from uh, Preston. So Preston did get some joy from the season, getting the mark and the goal of the year. And the correct uh, answer we required came from Mark Allen, and he wins a trip for two to Rest Point Casino. Compliments of a, &A. 
Well, to the matter at hand now, the VFA Grand Final for 1988, and it's Coburg who have jumped away well. They lead by 16 points at quarter time. Sam Kekovic, uh, do you think it may have been a little bit more had uh, Williamstown not steady there at the end, or did perhaps uh, the Lions relax a bit? Well, I think Coburg would be a little bit disappointed with their effort in that first quarter. It was a sensational opening. They ran away to a five or six goal lead. But as we've seen, has been the case with Williamstown throughout the course of the year. They've been notoriously slow beginners. But, you know, through some uh, not really outstanding efforts, they claw their way back in the game. And here we see a quarter time against the Breeze. They're 16 points behind. Well, Terry Wheel the is a coach who never panics in that situation as Angwin got the first goal for Coburg. Perhaps a little bit of a fluky start, but uh, it got them rolling. Got them rolling. Well, as you said, Terry doesn't panic. He's got a wonderful constitution, Terry Wheeler. And he's got tremendous faith in his players and invariably they don't let him down. But that first quarter I just felt was uh, dominated by, here we see Weatherall on screen, superb long goal. But I thought the Coburg half back line was simply magnificent with Harbinson, Ingram and Ede setting up a numerous opportunities up forward for their running players. And guys like Rennitz, Williams, Allison were really running rampant across that forward line. And Willie were really playing a rear guard. Here we see on replay one of the few times they ventured forward and Carl kicked a 50 metre goal here. That was their first and they really desperately needed that. Here we see them go into attack again. I was a bit critical of Williamstown's defence here. I thought they could have laid a better tackle there but more importantly the goal was scored from Coburg's point of view. And they've to me appeared to be a little bit quicker. They were certainly desperate, but as I've, we've said all along, that Williamstown have got the capacity to claw their way back in. The stats are quite comparable on screen, apart from the marking, which is Coburg's favour by some nine handballs, and there's a slight discrepancy in free kicks. Not a slight one, but quite a <laughs> distinct discrepancy. I think that might be the other way around, actually. Nine to Williamstown and one to Coburg. One to Coburg. Yeah. Well, let's go down to Ross Booth, who's been listening to the coaches. Yes, Peter. Well, Phil Cleary, very upset at that last 10 minutes of Coburg. Not disciplined enough. Uh, you'll see Williamstown try and run the ball. Big Barry Round will be in the goal square. So this time it's Williamstown kicking with the breeze. They're going from right to left. Angwin trying to back his judgment. McTaggart has done some good things, showing an example. A hard tackle there. Let's Carl get the ball forward. A story. No mark or free kick. Rickman. Oh, he can go close here. Just put under some pressure on kicking. And Nimmo, captain of the Coburg side, out to Harbinson. Two survivors from 79. The only other man involved in that grand final and involved today is Phil Cleary, coach of the Coburg team. Bede. What's opening up for him? Rakavolis is loose. Wiedemann as well. He goes in the big fellow's direction. Plenty of seagulls there. Gee, Coburg, but aren't they prepared to take a chance to create something? Yeah, you know, they went absolutely right across the ground in an endeavour to draw the defence. Switching play all the time, trying to run them ragged. Got very good skills and then, uh, they're prepared to back themselves in that area and it usually pays off, especially with the extra space in the 16-minute side. Terry Wheeler, really, as we've right seen there. quite often this year, Pete, haven't we? Come up holding his right ear. Yeah, he makes it look uh, really good. <laughs> I was interested, uh, Sam, to note before that uh, when you were talking about Terry umpiring and, and the fact that Williamstown have got right nine there, free Brandon. kicks, I was wondering whether you were uh, making any inferences there at all. Well, well, I mean to say the bottom line of it all is you wouldn't think they've got nine free kicks to one, and yet in general play, <laughs> I don't think it's benefited. Yep, I've got you. Yep, you're right well, there. no need yep. for the umpire to adjudicate there. A clean mark from Big Ian Rickman. Five Distance won't now. worry him. The meter this side of the line. The breeze coming over his right shoulder. Perhaps not as strong as it was in the opening quarter. He's kicked one goal. Got three now. Oh, beautiful goal kicking from Ian Rickman. Take a bow, son. That's what grand finals are all about. And does he always save his best? Bit like a big occasion. Bit like yourself, Sam. Uh, doesn't do a good pre-season. Takes a while to warm up for the season. But once the finals come, he's firing. Well, as a matter of fact, I've got to be implicitly honest with you, Peter. I did, I did put in a couple of shockers during my career. Yeah. Well, that's the first time he's admitted that this year. Rickman. No mistake. That's the handball from Langan. Murphy. Through the hands of Sheldon. Who's the first to recover? Off the ground from McTaggart. The two Liston medalists involved there. 
Nimmo. Here's McTaggart leaving it for Rickman. On to the other will Shepherd. Thrown out there to Carl. Nimmo under pressure and does well. Our story was right there. And if he hadn't got that touch, it would have been another one for the Seagulls. The difference now, nine points in favour of Coburg. Three minutes into the second quarter. Sorry, Peter, they feel a little bit more composed, don't they, Peter? A bit more settled. That's right. Nimmo's doing an excellent job on uh, round down there. His experience is really showing. Grant Smith wobbles it off the side of his boot. He'd be disappointed with that result. Sheldon. Nimmo. They're supremely confident in their uh, ball skills, Coburg. Wiedemann. So often the target up here, just shy of the centre. Nimmo, or rather, Ingram. Oh, kicks it straight into Kennedy. Oh, inexplicable mistake there. It'll come back, though. Angwin. Rennitz and Harbinson. Plenty of Coburg players. Oh, but beaten by the one player, Dale, uh, was... Burke there, oh, Slevinson, a great smother. And this is an excellent bit of umpiring here, Peter. Umpire Harvey spotted behind play. I don't know whether the viewers saw it, but Murphy was being held onto by Reynoldson. Well, certainly warranted. Murphy finds Carl loose. Oh, thumped away by Wiedemann. That hurt Carl. Doing a great job, Wiedemann, there, uh, moving around the ground. Might show on the stats, but uh, it's definitely holding up Williamstown's forward thrust. Rayburn inside the 50, a pass from Wheeler. Rickman has loose the handball over the top. And there it is, Ian Rickman for number three. Well, that was probably Williamstown's best passage of play, wasn't it, Peter? They ran the ball out of defence and the gaps appeared and they're working a lot harder. Rayburn in particular, as we mentioned earlier, one of their running plays to set up the opportunities for the bigger guys. As coaches, Sam, we love that sort of play, don't we? Move the ball quickly, it catches the opposition off guard and uh, makes it very difficult for defenders. Well, Rickman took a while getting up there, just carrying a leg. I don't know whether it's a, a thigh. He's had some hamstring problems this season. Smith. Oh, Sheldon let it run through to Rayburn. Holding the ball to decision. Right there, Rich! Rectified that mistake very well then, Sheldon. It was unlike him to fumble, but he got back and uh, picked Rayburn up pretty quickly, fortunately, for uh, Kobe. The President and the Prime Minister, Brooke Anderson, the right VFA there, President, with Mr Hawke. Who's at the top of the heart of the uh, hierarchical tree. Rickman's in trouble, I think. Ball falling short into the hands of Coburg, who swing it forward quickly. Yes, they're signalling the bench, I think, to bring him off. This will be a that was severe blow to Williamstown, Peter, won't it? Rennitz, who scored that behind. I think it might be his ankle. He's moving a little. There he is. I don't think he want to come off somehow. No, that'll be a big blow to Williamstown. Just starting to hit his straps now. Williamstown moving the ball much quicker, giving him a chance to lead. Di Martino to Sleverson. Lead from Nilsson. Ingram will come with a fist from behind. Well taken there by Allison. Nowhere. Good decision. Yes. To go, yes. No, no way the rack of Olis could have got that out. So we're starting to agree a lot about <laughs> football matters, Ross, you and I lately. I must be improving, Sam. <laughs> Terry Wheeler. Gums working overtime. Let Chewing. He's playing a good game too. Carl has the run of the ball. Good work by oh, well, Harbinson. I think he got into his back. Crowd thought so. He fell over your gum for the ball, mate. You're over the ball. Throw it up. You heard John Harvey's explanation. So Seagull's in attack. Rennitz has the ball stolen by Pastori. Smith. Oh, oh he got he's one high there. Let him up. No You're 50. Right Just one. <laughs> right and the ball mark. must have travelled 10 metres. He's been paid the mark. Kick. Barry round. Gets first grab. Pastori. 
Too oh. slow. Good tackle by the Cobra oh. defence. Rickman, oh, here's a go. Rayburn, Lindsay Carl, straight through. They're sneaking up, Sam. Well, so much so they've put their nose in front now, Peter. I think you're right. Lindsay Carl, second goal. There he is. Con being congratulated. Well, Rickman's the man that should be congratulated here. He can hardly move, but he got this knock out. Look, he's gone there. And a Excellent beautiful team tackle. play. You're right, Peter. But more important, it's also significant to note from Williamstown's point of view that Smith's starting to gather a few possessions too. Their on-board players are definitely contributing more. Terry's obviously uh, picked that as a problem at quarter time. And they're in the front, the Seagulls, by two points. Eight-minute mark. Rakovolis for the Lions. Oh, Sleverson beats the odds. Now Shepherds for Murphy. Now it's Coburg who can't find the handle. Rakovolis there. Scrambling it for it. The bounce will take place 40 metres out from the Coburg goal. Let's knock it out. And if you're just catching up with ABC VFA football this season oh. in the grand final, the umpire's wide for sound. You can hear their explanations. It's brought a new... Danny! Danny! See, uh, oh. Wait. Allison there, a little Let kick on. Go, no, I was going to speak to him. Well, that's inexcusable. That's absolutely silly. But, a bit of retaliation but, from right Allison. Been a good player this year for Coburg, but uh, saw red there. Play on. Play on. Play on. Taylor. Play on. Kennedy has it knocked loose, but there's Murphy, uh, rather Smith with the crumbs. Carl has saw them bearing down on him. He's still being held. The umpire's really letting it go. Rennett. Eid. Wilson keeping with him. should have been holding the man because he bounced it. It wasn't as if he was throwing it out in front of him. Uh, sorry, Pete, but that should have been a free kick. <laughs> oh, he'd, he'd run 10 metres, though. Surely you've got to bounce it. But uh, if the ball's out of your possession, when, when it hits the ground out of your possession and you grab it, it's a free kick. You're still deep in possession. He bounced a long way before great. he was grabbed. A long, a long time well, before he was grabbed. Three to one. There's see. the umpire's decision. He bounced it a long time before he was grabbed. Oh, in that case, you should have oh. awarded him a free kick for being held. Well, that's what I thought. Here well, we go. the umpire's being wired for sound has just added to our confusion, really. <laughs> <laughs> but we know what he Let thinks, and he's the man that counts. That's the uh, new aspect to the game that we've become privy to this season. Carl, squaring kick. And there's Beck Barry. Round. Hands off to McTaggart. Oh, loose man. Murphy, the defender. Oh. He's played off. He's thought, oh. I've got to go back and have a shot at goal. Go back and have and it's been too much for Glenn Murphy. 100 plus game player, but he wouldn't have kicked too many goals in his career for the Seagulls. Snuck down last week on Shane Hellis when he was working hard on the, on the uh, half back line and kicked one. Taking touch with free then, I thought. To Harbinson. Peter, it'd be interesting to note uh, what sort of a psychological drain this would have on Coburg too after that blistering opening and now to be pegged back. I think, Sam, that the game is. Uh, Shaping up to be a typical grand final. There's a few little uh, niggles going on now. I think we could have a bit of fun before the day's out. Oh, look at that tackle on Rennitz. There's the fun. Well, Nostradamus well. Waitman. Right out. Take your hands off Someone's in. book is Go coming on. out, I right think. Out. Have you got a free kick? Right out. Have you got well, a free kick? There's a trainer there involved. Go. Maybe he's going to get sent off. Have you got a free kick? Get it going, no. Umpire right. Harvey right. has taken out the book. Umpire, Terry would love to get involved, but he's got two players to mind at centre-half back. Put it away anyway. Umpire Walker it was. Yes, he's put it away quickly. Perhaps that was just a bit of a warning. Good psychological work. Sleverson. Pastori. Angwin. He gets it out. Carl. Good dive forward. Didn't no free. The well, now the frees are going Coburg's way. Wiedemann has each short and wide. Williams making a lead to the pocket. Here comes the pass. Over his head. Jim Atteno with him. Murphy to give support. Good tackle by Williams, but two beats one. Murphy into the centre. Harbins has the drop. Carl almost marked it, though. Good work, Carl. Pastori and Angwin. Both run hard at the football. Sheldon 
Gets the crumbs. Right. Searing pass out towards Smith. Good bounce. Sleverson, this looks dangerous. On the left. Rickman in good position. So is Rayburn. Oh, but Wiedemann came in with courage. And finally, Too many hands baller. there. They're certainly, certainly starting to... I didn't think it was there. Blend in a lot better at the moment, aren't they, Peter Williamstown? I think their runners are contributing now and uh, they're moving the ball quicker and it's definitely helping their forward for us. You see Vinny the Tank Taranto being brought on by Phil. Burke has gone off as Sheldon. Midway between wing and half back. Two points down, our oh. Coburg. We've played 13 minutes. Kershaw to pump the Seagulls back let forward. Go, let him go. Four Wait time there. winner back of the later. Williamstown Best and Fairest oh. Award. His fifth mark for the day. Back to Murphy he goes. Lyons the call. Wilson missed completely. The crowd don't know why he didn't mark it, but you heard it from the umpire. Touch play on. Allison. Told he's clear by Rennett, who puts in a top tackle. Too high! Too high! And the ball beats him over the boundary line. Rennett's there. Really allowed Allison to come through by shepherding off a man. I'd be interested to know the stats between uh, Kershaw and Wiedemann. They seem to be playing end to end there. Yeah, they're wide of each other, Peter. Paul. Paul. Sorry, Paul Field goes for his papers. He's got some work Paul. to do. And Sleverson coming into his own. Long kick, Pastore. Oh, going back. Paul. Look at McTaggart loose. He's playing a top game. Rickman leads short. McTaggart goes long, preferring round. Neither of them get it. Nimmo with him. Nimmo will seek the sanction of the boundary line. There it is. Well called, Ross. This is a great mark by Pastore. Thanks, Fingertip. Brad. He played a corker in 86 when moved to uh, fullback. Sleverson's playing an effective game across that half-back line too. Round against Wiedemann. Over the top was Nilsson. Round. Rickman came off his shin somewhere. And Nimmo will take the free. Right there. From Williamstown's point of view, he looks as though he's fully recovered. Nimmo takes it away, switching sides. Oh no, he hasn't run too far, has he? Handball from a free kick, says umpire Ross Walker. And Must rightly so. Down. You would think Ball after up. 22 rounds of VFA football. A new rule that was employed at the start of the year would have been observed and understood by all players at this time of lunch thing, Peter. Sam, it just shows you what the pressure of a grand final can do to you. Happy Williamstown supporters on screen. They're leading by two points. Smith, quick one to round. Can he find space? Feeds it out. It doesn't work. Kenny Ingram clears for the Lions. Uh, thanks to our stat statistician, we've got the stats on Kershaw and Wiedemann, and they're very comparable. Virtually playing end-to-end. -end. Both players positioning themselves at centre-half back, respectively, and uh, repelling attacks. Littler out to Allison. The crowd think it was a throw. There's Kershaw. Wiedemann, nowhere to be seen. Looks like those Great Williamstown ball, supporters have been to the show, Peter. Yeah. Lauren Gold hats. Didn't see any in Chapel Street or Phil shops. And the ball! Remitz has to do the ruck work, number two. Here's Sleverson, put in a good second term. Still two points the difference. Favour of Williamstown. Oh, oh, Kershaw, oh, oh. umpire's already called play on. Wheeler. Pastore. McTaggart telling him he's clear. There's Rickman's lead. Well, he seems to be moving pretty well now. A very speedy lead. His 11th possession. And he left Littler in his wake there. This Sam, is a difficult one. Sam, those runners are improving for Williamstown. McTaggart, uh, Sleverson, Kyle. They're setting, certainly setting them up, Peter, you're right. 40 metres out. Right there. Bomber goes overhead. Oh, oh magnificent! <laughs> Behind. Three goals, two today for Rickman. You can feel, feel some of the people some of the time. Right there, Lindsay. 
But you can see, Pete, he doesn't need too many opportunities, does he? Being such a long kick. No, he pulls him out in these sort of games. Deed. Too long for Ingram. And all of a sudden, the pass is not going to chest or hand as they were in the first term when they really had a roll on. We haven't had a score for 10 minutes. No score in 10 minutes. Been a great game. Still so sawing from end to end. Until that behind. Here's William in front position. Now Ingram can get it away. Sleverson caught him illegally. Umpire calls advantage. Taranto. Langan. Got it through to Harbinson. Taranto. Not such a good hand pass. Angwin did very well with it, though. Williams has two to beat. And there's Danny Del Rey. And there's Frankie Vagona. Williamstown's Personality of the Year, VFA umpire, who missed out on a record-breaking umpiring uh, grand final appearance today. And he's enjoying it from the grandstand. Well, they would be very happy with themselves at VFA to have an umpire of the calibre of Frank Vagona in the stand, Peter. Yes, I think they'd be very happy with this crowd, Sam. It's looking very good. Excellent. A good tap. One by Rennett. Taranto gets one high and then legged. No free. Rennett's beautiful tap on. Angwin on the left at the back is Williams. Oh, he pushes to Di Martino on the back, then gets one in the oh. back. But he's let it go, fortunately. No free kick. He come over. He's up, he's up, Brian. Ronnie, there you go. Good shot of it there. Free kick in Something's happened. I think. Talking to Del Rey. I don't know what he did, but Allison's got a free kick. Interesting Kershaw's coming right off right the ground, out. Peter. Dimitino's coming on. This to put the Lions back in front. Okay. Allison splits the middle. And they lead by three points. 20 Daddy, minutes gone, on second the quarter. This means that Barry Rand will be in the ruck now for uh, Williamstown. Be interesting to see whether he can uh, change the pattern of the game a bit. Well, Peter, in. Williamstown's performances, I've always maintained that Williamstown are a better, better balanced side with round in the ruck. Unfortunately, Kershaw, you can't, you compel, they compel the play him on the ball, but I feel with round on the ball, they've, they're a better balanced side. Rickman back to full forward, Reynoldson at centre half, and I'm sure Big Barry Relish is running around the, the ground a lot more than being anchored back at full forward. He doesn't win that tap. Langan takes the crumbs. Ball falls nicely for Alan Ede. Oh, tackle oh. by Sleverson. It's good. Toronto through with strength. And down low goes Kennedy. Wheeler. Oh. How delighted to be tackled by Vin Toronto no, in the back. Well, I'm sure the tank was put in there. Didn't agree with the decision. Hold a balance of power, I think. Wiedemann at the back. Number one, Rennett's playing a great game for Coburg. Kick not so good. Straight to Kennedy on the rebound. And Harbertson reads it better than Smith. I'm lucky not to incur a 50-metre penalty. Off to Rennett's. He's looking for... Reynoldson almost pulled in a spectacular one in the pocket. Rackavola stumps it out. Murphy. And Reynoldson and he both see the ball over the line with... Three points, the lead to the Lions. We've As you would expect, Peter, wouldn't you? Both sides minutes. being very desperate and just throwing themselves into the fray with gay abandon. It's shaping up as a top game at this stage. Barry Round, A and A Footballer of the Year, got it down to Wheeler, and then Wheeler got Rakavolas high. He's kicked it into him. Rayburn caught by Langan. These free kicks are starting to balance themselves out in this quarter. Yes, I quite well, agree with this, Sam. You're inferring that the umpire's advisor has a statistician, Sam. Oh. No, but I'm sure the Coburg have been in the oh. seat of a couple of doubtful ones. <laughs> Great smothering going on. Ball still on half forward, but not for long. Good mark from oh. the Liston medalist. Off to Nimmo. Full short. Pastori. Able to make amends. Sleverson. Coburg have the numbers oh. here. Rennett knocks it down there for Reed. Oh. Pastori caught. 
bounce to take place between wing and half forward for Coburg. Looking a bit better. Yeah, they have rallied and steadied a bit, Heath. Good at one stage, Willie. Some ominous signs there for a while, but they've really held their own well. Very round to Rayburn. Kick's gone nowhere. Just Sheldon. Coburg into attack. Rats. Long kick by Tim Rennitz into the square. Williams at the back. Off hands. 14 possessions to Tim Rennitz. Playing a super game for the Lions. Very pensive and concerned. Coburg bench. Phil Cleary, the coach, is in the position up behind glass. Hard to get a shot of him. Through the hands of Murphy. Wiedemann knocks it forward. The big fellow, he gets down on the ground like a rover. And some Bearface supporters would say hard to get a shot at him. You think that's why he's behind glass? <laughs> Doing a great job, Wiedemann, for his team. Very disciplined. Reynolds down there to Lickler. Across to Rennitz. Good length on the kick, but well done, Robert DiMartino. Murphy. That was first possession of the day for DiMartino. Williams has only kicked one goal. Spoiler was Nimmo. Here's Rennitz again. Oh, good handball. He had to keep it low. He found Allison. Shepherding there from Langan. Allison to the edge of the square. Williams' hands. They're keeping it up on their forward line. Increased their lead to five points. We've played 24 and a half minutes, second term. Coburg, the leaders. Round and Wiedemann. Full for Laurie Taylor, being very quiet. Oh, Rennett's in low and hard at the ball. That's good football. Draws applause from the large crowd here at Windy Hill. 16 possessions to Tim Rennett's. Round and Wiedemann, oh. Alden the Young. Wiedemann wins it, good work on, oh, and again, great vision from Rennitz to Allison, back to Rennitz, inside 50, shot on goal, coming up, uh, and look at that. Hits the post, is it? I don't think it's... Oh, might have just bra yes. raised it there. Oh, that one right, it did hit the post. <laughs> right in the middle, umpire Alec Lindsay at the grandstand end, or the Napier Street end. It's almost a carbon copy of that first quarter, Peter, isn't it? One side monopolising possession. Williams down at the beginning of this quarter and Coburg rallying. Please up, please up. Yeah, yes. It's interesting to note that uh, Coburg half-back line are moving up and down the ground and keeping a wall up there and repelling all the attacks. Kennedy. Good tackling. Rakovolis held him up. Shot out by Langan. Here's Eid. 40 out. Oh. Another poster. We'll count these. A few of the Williamstown players, Peter, also have been guilty of not taking the first option, just endeavouring to do a little bit too much and too many of the flashy things. Yeah, still that element of uh, individual play there, whereas Coburg uh, are teaming very well, giving a quick handball out, first option. Darren. Um, Rousel. Darren, I was correct first time. Rousel, stretching the hamstrings, looked like he might come on, round in front. Good grab. Second time. You don't often see that. You oh. need to mark it on the second grab. Certainly not in the dry. Kick not a good one. Finds Angwin. Back, back, back. Good umpiring. Vin DiMartino right threw him to the ground, but it wasn't worthy of 50 metres. Angwin looking for Reynoldson. He's in front of Murphy. Oh, round does a roving beautifully. Rayburn, good tackle. Gets rid of it quickly, though. Round again, good work. Murphy holds it in one-handed, centres it, Justin Imo. So they're falling down badly across centre half forward, Williams back around, back around. Oh, Very correct, Sam, I was just thinking the same thing. Nimmo's now, the round has gone on, the ball has become a dominating player there, using his body well. Captain Nimmo, five kicks of the quarter. Del Rey went defensive. Rakovolis. Oh, someone Who holding their head there? there. Terry Wheeler, and he's got the free, or has McTaggart Keep taken it? No, oh, it's Terry. Littler getting in front of Pastore and doing Look it well. Shepard allowed Need to get it back to Littler, gets it to Sheldon. 
Taranto. Round and Murphy back there. And Barry very calmly let it bounce through. Could have uh, taken the off break. Doing the hard things well, aren't they? Peter Coburg knocking the ball on, tackling, harassing. Yeah, Phil has got them very well disciplined. They're, for years now, they've uh, stuck at their task. No matter whether they're in front, behind, whatever, they just keep playing their own style of game until it comes their way. Russell is on and Rayburn is off for Williamstown. Laurie Taylor. But he's put under intense pressure by Nimmo. With Coburg have got it. Tim Rennett's on the left foot. Tried to find Williams or Weatherall, but spliced the two. Di Martino was the man he found, Robert. Right there. There's Peter Wells, chairman of selectors for Williamstown. Former Footscray giant. Nielsen. Strong arms. Delray. Oh, that'll bring rain. Let's hope not. Angwin. Good stuff. Chips it short to Nimmo. Nilsson, big casual. To Ede. He looks dangerous and he gets around Delray. Centers it round, backing back. Gets a hand in. Well done. That's the siren sounds for half time. Coburg leading by eight points. And looking at the goal kickers for Coburg, just one in that term. But uh, they have kept the lead, and Phil would be very happy with that, though. As I said, the breeze did drop, and perhaps Williamstown not getting the advantage from it that Coburg did in that first term. Goal kickers for Coburg, still all singles, with uh, Allison getting one in th that term. Rennitz has a single. Reynoldson, Weatherald, Williams, Angwin, and uh, Rakavolis, their other goal kickers. While for Williamstown, Ian Rickman really got the rolling in that term. He kicked two for a total of three so far, and Lindsay Carl has their other two goals but a 16 point lead at quarter time cut by half eight points is Coburg's lead at half time in the 1988 grand final through heat dust hard training through the winter and wouldn't be able to do it without them. Thanks. Congratulations to Bernie Seymour and no doubt all of you in Bendigo very happy with that victory and what a great speech after uh, putting in such an effort to uh, win that final. He got the split on the inside and didn't he take it well. Congratulations to Bernie. Well the uh, Premier has got a lot of uh, presenting to do today. He'll pre be presenting the ANA Cup to the victorious team today in the 88 Grand Final at half time. It's an eight point lead for Coburg over Williamstown. Coburg were going for three premierships today. Unfortunately they can only make it two because their reserve side were beaten by uh, three points by Springvale, though their under-19s were successful this morning in defeating Preston. So two out of three wouldn't be a bad day's work for the Coburg Football Club, who won the Quit Club Championship. I wonder if they can hang on to that eight-point lead or go away and perhaps extend it. Sam Kekovic and Peter Waitman with me. How do you sum up the first half? Well, Pete, I think that they can certainly go on with the job, but I think an interesting event occurred halfway through that second quarter, Peter, when they took King Pershaw off the ground and put Barry round in the ruck. And what happened, it allowed Brad Nimmo, who was relatively quiet and forced to sacrifice his own game in defence, to look after round, to go to centre-half back, and he became a very damaging and effective running player, which set up a lot of Coburg's forward thrusts. But the game in general virtually has been a carbon copy, or each quarter, really, each respective side has monopolised uh, possession. I felt in the first quarter, Coburg got away to a great start. They led by five or six goals up to the 20-minute mark, and then Williamstown rallied and got themselves back in the game. And the same thing occurred in the second quarter when Williamstown gained the ascendancy, and towards the latter part of that quarter, Coburg fought their way back and they rallied. In fact, from the 24-minute mark of that first quarter to the, th to the termination of the quarter, Williamstown had about six or eight shots for goal, and I think, if my memory serves me correctly, kicking two goals five. And the same thing occurred in that second quarter, Peter, when from the 24 to the 31 minute mark, Coburg, in fact, had about eight shots and kicked one six or one five. So, in fact, I'm still none the wiser. We've witnessed half a game of football, but I'm still none the wiser as to who will evolve victors. I think it's a very, very tight, hard game. And uh, I really think it's going to be a crackerjack second half, Pete. What do you think? 
I'm sure you're right, Sam. I think it's a classic encounter between two sides that play uh, slightly different uh, styles of football. You've got Coburg that's playing a very team-orientated uh, style, which uh, credit to Phil Cleary. Uh, they're getting quick handballs out of packs, and they've got plenty of options around the packs, and uh, delivering the ball with great uh, skill, hand and foot. <laughs> they're creating uh, options in a team fashion and, and moving the ball very quick, quickly. Whereas I think at some stage there we did comment on, on the fact that Williamstown are relying very heavily on individuals to perform for them. And one of these guys, Peter, was on screen there, Ian Rickman, who was responsible for getting them back in that game with two goals in that second quarter superbly. And Richie Rayburn, which you mentioned, got himself, you know, moving and becoming uh, a valuable contributor. Well, I think the, the Rovers are the keys to Williamstown's game at this stage. If they, Tail and Rayburn are two very quick uh, very much roving type players and uh, as against the more medium sized players and the hard workers like Allison and, and these guys. Uh, McTaggart's on, on top in the centre I feel at this stage. Um, I think Coburg could do well if Williams and Weatherall both played more in front. I think they both played from behind a lot and uh, probably lost a little bit of the advantage of the, uh, of the hard work being done by on ball players but uh, there again he's behind again uh, pushing the back there missed by the umpire but uh, I, think, I think you know there's this game could go either way, there's no doubt about it. I mean, we've seen an example of the situation up until half-time. Interesting incident involved there. The viewers are seeing it on screen. There was a free kick paid to Allison, who wasn't involved in the uh, that passage of play, but I think an indiscretion committed by one of the Williamstown players. And there the stats. Well, we couldn't get more even. Could be the kicks are comparable. Marking, slightly in favour of Coburg. Handballs, line ball virtually, and free kicks. Well, Williamstown have got a 50% gain in that regard. I think the stats do tell a story, Sam. If you look at the scoreboard, Coburg uh, are in front, and uh, I think they're more efficient users of the ball at this stage. They're getting more value out of their, their possessions, uh, and, and that does tell on the scoreboard. But uh, I think Williamstown probably need to be a little bit more committed in getting the ball, um, and, and as, as a couple of players, they do have a style where they get a couple of players out on the wings wide. The backline players have got to work hard to get it out to them, and if that doesn't happen, um, you know, then they're in trouble. Well, Ross Booth has been in the rooms during the half-time break. Both teams out there ready to get underway. The last half of football for 1998. I wonder what instructions they've got in their minds. Well, Peter, Phil Cleary, you know, a glazed look in his eyes. He stared at these players. They left the room. Win the contest, he said. Win the contest. They feel they've won the physical battle against Williamstown and can go on with it. Terry Wheeler, he runs around uh, speaking to each player, sort of shaking them and saying, win it, win it, win it. A lot of emotion from both these coaches. I think we're in for a great second half. Yes, I don't think... Uh, I think it'd be... A... That really is uh, necessary to point out. It, it, it just wonder which way that the pendulum's going to go. So far, as you've pointed out, Sam, it's been one side that's got the break, uh, played the best football for the first half, 20 minutes of the quarter, and then the other is steady, come back and uh, had the bulk of the scoring without perhaps making the most of it. Uh, as you said, Coburg peppered the goals there towards the end of that quarter, just kicked one goal for the term, though. I really believe Williamstown could feel harshly, harshly done by. I really believe in that second quarter, they had opportunities up forward to really go to a three or four goal break, but they broke down sadly across centre half forward and a couple of, you know, overly eagerly, overly extravagant use of the ball has cost them dearly. But certainly there's nothing in it and it's going to be a crackerjack second half. Coburg going from right to left. Wiedemann backs into Bye. Kershaw and takes the ball. Bye. Can't get it through to Allison. McTaggart. Rousel. Decides to go back. The interchange player kicked four in the reserves last week. Got himself into the grand final side. First possession. Round. Wow. The mountain couldn't bring it down. Wow. Spills loose from Ingram. Sheldon to clean up. Does well. Turns on a threepence. Gets it across to Weed. Look at the desperation on his face. Angwin. Oh, took that too easily. Carl. Player no 10. Knock it out. Bounce midway between wing and half forward for Williamstown, and that's Rousel holding his head. Bracavolis gets up holding his forehead, so a clash of heads from the two little men at ground level. Nilsson in ruck, beaten by Wiedemann. Taranto can't pick it up. Interesting facet of Coburg's play also, Peter, is in defence. I'm most impressed with their defenders that they don't panic. They almost invariably 
gain poise and ensure that they dispose of the ball very effectively as opposed to Williamstown who tend to sort of get boot the ball haphazardly. Taranto on to Eden. Set a wing. McTant didn't quite take it with him. Allison being very prominent. Angwin looked for the hand pass but then chose to pass towards Williams just wide. The man inside was covered. A tickle of clashes there too between Pastore and Wiedemann. I don't think I'd relish running into either. Eight points in favour of the Lions. And they're in attack, kicking with the breeze in this third quarter. Rakavala's off the left. Will it be brought back by the breeze or the turn off the wicket? Stays in play. Di Martino. Oh, this is a classical or critical error. Not a classical error. My goodness me, Sam, what about that one? How easy is that? Well, you can't help but feel sorry for the poor guy. I'm sure that'll be one of the memories when he sits down tomorrow or during the course of the week and views the replay. I just hope for his sake that this game is not in the balance right on the siren and the margins are a handful of points. Witherall taking that golden opportunity, kicking his second. He is now gone onto the ball and an angle to a half-back flank. That yeah. one's in the back. Carl takes the free kick. Been a hard, tireless worker, Carl. Right on the mark there! Round the target. Ball won't make him. Oh, good mark, Littler. He backs his judgment, this man. And invariably comes down with the ball. He's a contender for mark of the year. They swing wide again. Sheldon. Feed. What's opening up for him? Williams from behind. Weatherall in front. Murphy. Drew the man nicely. Sleverson got a cruel bounce. Taranto. Oh, loose man at half forward. Allison, no, it's Langan. Weatherall. Del Rey sweating on him. Off the goal. Langan thought about soccering. Left it for Williams. McTaggart. High one to the wing. Smith from behind. Couldn't bring it down. Nilsson. Oh, calling for it out there is Carl. Oh, gathered beautifully from 40. Lindsay Carl on the left. Shepard it off was round by Nimmo. Interesting the comparisons when they venture forward the respective sides, Peter. Coburg very methodical and preci with precision as opposed to Williamstown, who just pepper it haphazardly up front. Yeah, very much individual performances again there. Interesting to note that um, Littler is now on Nielsen at uh, centre-half back in England on Rickman at full forward. It is interesting. Interesting little event here, Ross. Overstepping the mark. And the bounce down. You can see it right in goal. Very round! Two costly areas at each end of the ground. They've evened themselves up now. So that both players can forget about it. And the difference back to seven points in favour of Coburg. And how many times have we seen the monolith fulfil that role of team lifting? Richard. Done it superbly that time. Have a look at this. Strength, brute strength, out of the pack and snapped accurately. And that, you're right, Ross, two bad mistakes either end of the ground. Five minutes gone. Third quarter. Wiedemann's tap. Volleyed beautifully by Ede. Williams, he's got two to beat. Oh, oh. throws the slipper in. <laughs> I think he connected with his thigh just as well. He got across the thigh of Del Rey. A fair bit of oomph on that. Two ample hams meeting there in midair. <laughs> Ruckman will do it all over again. Throw-ins about 40 metres around from the... Coburg goal. I, I tried to ask Phil Clear at halftime whether he had any injuries, but uh, either he didn't hear me or he just chose <laughs> to ignore me. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. Fancy bringing up that topic. I said hello to him this morning. He wouldn't even reply to that. Taylor. <laughs> Good mark, Carl. Little man holds his ground well. He's held them together, Pete, hasn't he? He's played very well. Beautiful pass. Oh, stolen by Pastore from Nilsson, who's still on hands and knees waiting for it. Bounces up beautifully for Kennedy, the running defender. Poor handball, but Rickman does well against Ingram. Oh, top stuff. 
Ian Rickman misses. Bad luck. Did the hard work, and you normally would have put the glasses down. Yes, that is a rarity, Peter. At least he appears to have recovered from that ankle or leg injury, moving freely. Fought very well to acquire possession, Ross. Did everything well, did the hard things, but as Barras said to me once, he said, son, the execution's not there. You'd be executed. Back to the 11.30 fixture. You mean he only had to tell you that once, Sam? You took it on board, did you? Well, I gave him the impression I was listening only <laughs> once. <laughs> Here go the Lions through Harbinson to Allison. We look sad, haven't touched the ball yet. And this th thrust forward. Wiedemann has it set a half forward. Loose man in the pocket is Ingram. Now it's not a slitler down from defence. Now going to shoot for goal. And misses. Eight points. No, back to seven points. It's exactly the point I was highlighting, Peter, when the two sides going into attack. Coburg are very methodical and invariably the gaps appear and they've got options as opposed to Willie really straining their backs to get up there, aren't they, haphazardly? I think it's the work around the ball, Sam. They, they give first option. They're very quick with that handball. It sets it up and off they go. Catches everybody off guard. Littler with the fist. The Rovers are all in blue and yellow Guernseys. Delray pushed over the boundary, though, by Taranto. Good defence by Taranto. And poor shepherding by Slevinson. Reynolds in front position on Kershaw. He's done that well. Langan almost stole it. Murphy off the ground. Rucks to do it all over again. If you're just joining us, the VFA Grand Final for 88 in First Division sees Coburg seven points up at the eight-minute mark of the third term. In Second Division, Oakley, too good for Sunshine. They ran out winners by 50 points in the curtain raiser here today. Great double header at Windy Hill as McTaggart tries to feed Kennedy. Tap on for Rousel. Smith. Harbinson right on him. Oh. And the umpires have let that go all day. They're holding up, the man yeah, on yeah, this occasion. Don't go over the top. Let him go. Don't give away. Seagull fans gesticulate. Grant Smith. Sets it up for round. Littler. Cool. Sheldon. Equally so. Langan. Rakovolis has the sit here. Oh, great play, Coburg. Centre made it perfect, that pass. Williams has led. The ball will go over his head. Weatherald against Koshur. It hasn't been touched. It's a goal. <laughs> Rakovolis gets one from 55 metres. But he was setting it up for Reynoldson, it was. And that all emanated, Peter, right from the full back line. Littler being cool under pressure, disposing it to Angwin, and Angwin's superb pass from 40, 50 metres out was just centimetre perfect. And allowed that goal. The big men jostling for position, misjudging the flight of the ball, rolling over the top, and as we've seen a number of occasions in VFA this year, rolls truly the off break. Second goal to Glenn Rakavolis. Meantime, Williams down into attack, held up by Sheldon. He had, he's had a lot of possessions. And he's used the well too. 14 possessions to Sheldon. Finds Wiedemann in the centre. Now Rennitz, chased by Wheeler. Kicks long. Williams at the back. Will this go through too? No. I think, Sam, the way Phil has set his ruck uh, set up up, it's much more um, efficient than Williamstown at this stage. Getting a lot of drive from uh, Wiedemann around the, around the ground. Yeah, he's doing a superb job, Peter. Ten minute mark. Third term. 14-point leaders, Coburg, Wiedemann goes defensive. Kennedy to Taylor. Sleverson. Hemmed in by Rakovolis. Taylor met solidly by Angwin and the Coburg crowd loved that. Hey! Sit on shoulders, settle down, Zip. Who is isn't Angwin fired up? Oh, isn't that great stuff? This is what football's all about. Wiedemann. Shark by Taylor, pressured by Allison. He's up. More Coburg players around that ball. He's up, come on. Very important at this stage of the game. Well, a little bit of desperation on the face of the Willie supporters there. A wink comes away from umpire Harvey, but the Coburg fans chanting for their oh. side. They love that shepherd from this man, Angwin. Oh. Kershaw too slow. Toronto to take the free.
Vinnie Taranto, the Hulk, thumps it. Williams in front this time. No, he's not. Across from the side comes Reynoldson. Williams had got in front of Di Martino, but brilliant judgment by Reynoldson. Call to play on. He must go. Now he does. And he's got support. Tim Reynolds to the point of the square. Williams and Di Martino from the side. Littler. Oh, the Williamstown defence are caught short again. Is that in the back? Play on calls the umpire. Oh, we gather our breath. They've been consistent on that all day. Yes, Peter. They've let it go. It's superb display by both men in white. By Harvey putting it down. Wheeler. Oh, blind kick. Rennets. Standing start through the middle. Second for Tim Rennets and Terry Wheeler. An error that is punished. Looking more composed, Sam, at this stage, Coburg. They are more composed and they're, more importantly, far more disciplined. Tim it is inexcusable to leave a forward within 30 yards of goal totally unattended. 23 possessions for Rena to playing a very important role in Coburg's uh, setup at this stage. He keeps going at that rate, Sam. How many will he end up with the game? Well, assuming we're going to play four quarters, Ross. Do you want me to calculate it for you? You're capable of doing that. Oh, no. Thank you. Wiedemann out of the middle. Langan off the carpet. Murphy in good position. Gets the fumbles. Delray in support. And again, Williamstown can't get clear. 20 points the, mar the margin. Well, they've exerted enormous pressure on them, Ross. The Lions kicking with a breeze. We've had 12 minutes of the third quarter. Can they avenge for their 1986 loss? Rennets again. 24. Oh, Allison gets the fumbles. Now space over the left shoulder. Good effort. Not quite good enough. 14 possessions, Allison. When you look at the size of Kershaw and Reynolds, he's, Reynolds and he's doing a very good job in the ruck there and allowing Wiedemann to drop back. 21 points with the breeze. They want to extend that Coburg. Oh, good tackle from Sleverson on Rakavolis. Yes. Just below the shoulders. Now it's Nielsen, Nielsen, the tackler. It's good to see it rewarded. He started at centre-half forward. Been beaten there as he puts it high for Smith, who waits down, and Wiedemann takes the mark. Well, the one time he should have flown, I've been critical, he's flown two or three times against Kershaw, and that's one time when he should have gone up. Wheeler. Plenty of seagulls. McTaggart. Smith. Yeah. Took his eyes off it. The rebound's on. Sheldon. Oh, look at them loose everywhere. Rakavalis called back onto it. Oh. And there's a 50 metre penalty. Crucial mistake there at, uh, in the centre of the ground, Sam. Smith. Yes, Smith took his eyes off the ball at that crucial stage. Before that, he let it bounce. Yes. It's a 50 metre penalty. Oh, and rightly, rightly so. It's amazing when you get a mistake like that, Sam, up the field. Coburg, uh, you know, made good use of that mistake, and here we have a goal on the board. Rakovolis puts it out in the school. Well, He's kicked four goals in this term. Rakovolis gets his second of the quarter, three so far for the match. It's been the case all afternoon, Peter. Every time that they fumble or make a mistake, they get punished severely by Coburg because their skill level is just absolutely superb, both ball, hand and foot. When you get a rebound situation like that in VFA football, all the players are out of position, and uh, normally the players that are, that are chasing finish up offensive players. So, Williamstown, can they get back, get one against the breeze? The Lions doing all the work. Here's one of them, Bear Ingram. Oh, Sheldon, brilliantly done. Rakavolis is in everything at the last uh, five minutes. Reynoldson at the front. Thumps it clear brilliantly. Weatherall, open goal. Will he bounce it? One, yes. And puts it through. Just the third kick to Brett Weatherold and th third goal. Well, it's champagne football by the Burgers. Well, they've certainly put a gap between themselves and Willie now. And I'm sure the happenings of 86 will be paramount in their minds now. There'll be no let in anymore. Grant Smith, who made that mistake, being pretty quiet, just 11 possessions. 
Williamstown need more from him, Sam. Much more, Ross. He's coming off the ground, Sam. Interesting to know. Yes, Smith being interchanged. Vin, uh, Vin DiMartino going on for the first time today. High one on Allison against Kennedy. Starting to get a bit frustrated, Williamstown. A bit of desperation in the eyes of their supporters, too. 33 points the difference in favour of Coburg. Good defensive Danny, mark Danny, from Danny Del Rey. Right there, Vin. Wheeler, he was the target. Didn't let his teammate down. Sleverson can go back to him. Murphy. Rickman leads. He really didn't have much room to work with there, Murphy. Sheldon off the wall. Wheeler's got the free kick. crowd find voice. Nilsson against three. Almost stole it. To, uh, Di Martino to Rousel. Littler pressuring him. Nimmo. Bounces 40 metres out from the Williamstown goal. Peter, those five Coburg goals this quarter have come in just eight minutes. Round. Nilsson couldn't take possession. New Ingram was there. Langan. Oh, great stuff. What sure handling. Oh, how cool is Rennett? Put it back into danger. Di Martino. Pastore. Round. Has it wrestled away by Rennett? Best on ground, I think. Beats Allison. He's got another chance. Shepherding from Reynoldson. He does some great things off the ball, Reynoldson. Taranto. Rennitz. Not a good handball. The tank couldn't pick it up. Now it's Willie on the spring. Well, not a good pass from Sleverson. Oh. Pastore. Oh. Corner beauty by Angwin. Flipped out to Ingram. Williams front position this time. Del Rey under all sorts of pressure. Oh. Stolen by David Williams. Unselfish. Oh. Or silly. Taranto caught by McTaggart. Taken by Rennitz. Oh, he's all class. Three goals for Tim Rennitz. While others puddled about, he came in, telling grab, and then banged it through his 27th possession. Certainly been the surprise back of this grand final, hasn't he, Rennitz? It's a great game, Sam, but uh, more, uh, more so, I think, is the fact that uh, Coburg back up so well. They're doing the support running much better than Williamstown, and even when there is a mistake, that was a poor handball, uh, they're still there to mop up. Eight possessions this quarter to Tim Rennitz. Look at that margin, 39 points. Nilsson puts it forward. Rickman diving, grab. Oh, a good one too. Gee, they need this. Right there, good Rick diving mark by, Ro by Rickman Ross. Well, he's one guy that's capable of getting them back in. You've got two metres now. 13th possession. He's kicked three goals. He's on a difficult angle. Still got a metre. Breeze going across the goals. And he's missed. As you can see how capable the Coburg defence is. See where Rickman was forced to lead to acquire possession? Right on the boundary line. They've really closed it up well, and more importantly, they've ensured that supply doesn't get down to him. From eight shots, Ian Rickman has three goals, five. That's unusual for him. They break at half back. Oh, Allison spilled it. Taylor flicked it out to Carl. Allison's made amends with a terrific tackle. Advantage call. Reynoldson, the big floater in the outfield. Murphy's fist. Langan, number 32. Gets away with it. Finds Taranto. Here's Rennitz again. How is he from a bit further out? Not as accurate. 39-point leaders. 
uh, Coburg. We've played 21 minutes, third term. Well, I think Woolwich's prediction of Coburg being brittle certainly has astounded me. If anything, I think they've taken it right up to them. And a few Williamstown players have been found wanting. That's what they felt at half time. And here they go again. Rennett, can anyone stop this man? Taranto. Straight through. Well, the tank's been a valuable inclusion, Peter, hasn't he? Uses the ball well. He's a good competitor. I think, Sam, the important thing here is that, uh, that that quick handball, I know that I'm harping on it, but uh, it's first thought. They don't think about it. Bang, out it comes. And, yeah, you're uh, right. Leaves everybody standing. Coburg's skill under pressure has been far superior to Williamstown. There's no question of that. And they've always got a player running past, players backing up. And here we see Vinnie the Tank. He'll be proud of this. It's another $15 that'll go into ABC coffers next week because Vinny will be buying this tape. I think they're $15, Peter, aren't they? Well, he might get uh, slugged uh, $80 or $90 for a new football. <laughs> yes, that one went out in the school as well. There's a smile on Charles's face too. I think he might have backed Coburn. Eight goals for the quarter. Carl. Nilsson. Nowhere to go. Off the ground from DiMartino. The captain coach can kick one. Oh, his feet failed him. And Ingram sees it over the boundary line. Umpire Richard Leslie in his first season of boundary umpiring, throwing it in. He'll get another chance. Need a bit of Barry Round magic at the moment. A couple of those quick goals out of the pack. I was just looking. I looked at Barry then when he tried to put boot the ball, but you know, it was about three yards, plus about four Coburg defenders over his boot. Round gives his forwards a chance. It's Leveson who's there. Not a bad effort to get boot to ball, but uh, was always going to be in great uh, difficulty to find the scoring zone. Actually, Gary, feels to be commended. To Peter, I think he's done his homework Gary. exceptionally well against Williamstown. Yeah, Round yeah, was Mark. obviously a focal point. I think he's been negated quite effectively. Smith was going to be another Brother pronounced Lindsay. member of that contributing Williamstown side. He's been banished to the back blocks. And Rayburn and them, and, uh, well, Carl's persisted, but Rayburn's been relatively quiet apart from that second oh. quarter. Rayburn's only had eight possessions, round nine. Here's Carl underneath it. He beats the other 15, Sheldon. And he too was in an almost impossible position from that pocket. Just don't have any momentum or system working, Peter, have they at the moment? <laughs> oh, smothered by the running and the commitment from Coburg. The running's tremendous. The, the way they're moving up and down the ground, the viewers can't really see it, but it's it's great. On. Lindsay Cow. Oh, nothing going right for Williamstown. Vin Di Martino. Can he do something? Oh, he said it it. On. Oh, Ingram, strength. Brilliant play, straight down the middle, Reynoldson. Right Can he feed it off? Right we'll go Mark. long. Murphy's in the way. He's going to look for yes, Rakavolis on centre wing. He comes over the top of Wheeler, recovers the better. And they're doing it easily. The kick's not so good. Off the side of the left foot. So 45 points the margin, and we're into time on. Who would he be supporting? Ross? He's got brown. There's no yellow there. It's not Hawthorne. Reynoldson in front. Oh, Williams. High. One out battle. Weatherald and Delray. Oh, a Pastore from the side. Good mark. He's taken some strong marks today. Fourth good one from him. Chips it wide. The running Murphy. Nothing much to kick it to. He's got a kick over Carl's head. And look at that. In the way. Harbinson. Alan Harbinson goes out to that wing, Weatherall. Right Reynolds. Really knocked up calling this man. Reynoldson. Murphy. Oh, almost in possession there. Williams not wanting to take possession and Di Martino not taking possession of him. Smith coming on, uh, Di Martino coming off. And Rayburn look like, looks like he's preparing to come on again. Kershaw had nothing to give it to. Well, Peter, both Smith and Rayburn are players that are capable of 
but that splash of class about them and a players that Williamstown desperately needs to get involved. You're right, Sam. To get back in this game. Coburg is sharing the workload so well, both offensively and defensively. Loose ball at centre wing. Milson. They're working hard, but nothing much is going right for the Kennedy long. Rickman in front. Gets a bad bounce. Nemo thumps it over the line. Ian Rickman there. And uh, that lady is enjoying her day of work. Out here at Windy Hill. There's a the scoreboard. 45 points to the Lions. Oh, uh, 90, 97 was handing beh hiding behind that man's back. Oh. Langan. Plenty of time, plenty of space. Chips it to Rando. Busy as a beaver. A big beaver, though. Kicks it long. Weatherall's not judged this too well. It was over Reynoldson's head. Yes, they just appear to have stopped. Williams down, and now Carl coming off. It's... Ooh. For Rayburn. Find some of these moves, Mr. Fine Peter. Yes, I, Sam, I'm a bit worried. Uh, I... Harking back to your comment, uh, when Kershaw came off in the second quarter, I just wonder whether uh, they might be better served with a runner on the ground and, and have round in the way. Here's Rennitz. Couldn't quite gain uh, possession. 31 there for the game. He's had 11 this term. Number two for Coburg, Tim Rennitz. And there's Lindsay Carl. William Sound about it. Just one point this quarter. 14 the possessions breeze. for Carl. Rousel there making a belated attempt to punch. Bounces about 60 metres out from the Coburg goal. Afternoon tea time here at Windy Hill. A 45 point lead for the Lions. Oh, umpire Walker says Rakovolis wasn't making any attempt. It's Wheeler. I think that's Terry's sixth free kick. Well, things really have turned around for Terry this year. He started the season uh, out through suspension, been reported once this year. As here's Rennitz again on the end of a handball from Sheldon. And missing again. They don't pick up very well, Williamstown. Sam, I've noticed the it's been defensive a work's been very, very poor, Peter. And there's uh, Peter Darby who missed out today in uh, getting into the 18. Reynoldson couldn't come down with it. Rakovolis caught by Pastori. He had no chance. It's just reverting back to that, Peter. It's always difficult when you see a guy like Peter Darby, who's, who's been a great guy for Coburg, but he'll take some consolation knowing that he's been a part of this successful 88 season. Oh, you're wiping, wiping them off, uh, Sam, already. But tag it. Oh, that's why. Look at the tackling from the Lions. Taranto. Point of the square. Oh, they've mucked it up too high on Allison. Now space. But a little bit of pressure forced him to miss out on the full. Sorry, Ross, did you ask me a question? Yes, Sam, you've written uh, Williamstown off. Oh, I'm telling you, Sammy, Williamstown get up here, I'll take it on Lulu this <laughs> oh, good. at the end of the year. Oh, that's right. dangerous. <laughs> Williamstown have uh, been known to come back from positions like this. But, uh, Peter, things seem to be going against them. Bounce the ball there, wouldn't come up to McTaggart. Those sort of uh, signs are ominous for a team. Not against the calibre of this opposition, they won't come back. Langan finds Rennitz. P. Williams. And I think Dave's going to have a shot. I think you make your own luck in those situations, Peter. He just didn't attack the football hard enough. If he had have done that, he would have got it one grab and the ball would have been down the ground. Good point. Williams. Only kicked one for the day in the first term. Right there. It's a magic word, that confidence. And uh, at this stage, Coburg have got plenty of it. Williamstown little. Weatherall almost. And Murphy kicks it through for a behind. The other thing, Peter, about Williams, whilst he's only kicked one goal, he's really been a hard-working forward. And every time the ball's up there, he's always contesting, knocking the ball out, shepherding. You know, he's still been a valuable contributor, as in fact of all the Coburg forward line. They fought very hard to keep the ball in, and that's very important, whereas it's come out of Williamstown's uh, forward line too easily. That's not a bummer, it's a chopper out here at Windy Hill. Rayburn, Sleverson. Over 30 minutes gone. 
and they've only scored a point for the quarter. Look at the strength of hands by Jeff Angwin. Unfortunately, though, caught with a football. Unlucky is Jeff Angwin. Advantage played, Rayburn. Oh, ball smothered brutally off the foot by Harbinton. Top tackle, Sheldon. The torpedo punt is wide. Wiedemann can't keep it in as the three-quarter time siren goes with Coburg leading by 47 points. What a top quarter. They kicked seven goals, six, while Williamstown could only add one goal, three. Is it a match-winning lead at three-quarter time? 30 minutes more football will tell us. Goal kickers up to the last break of season 1988. Three to Rennitz, three to Weatherald, three to Rakovolis. Each of those players kicking two apiece in that term. Singles for Allison, Williams, Taranto and Angwin, while for Williamstown, three to Rickman, two to Carl, one to Round and one to Rayburn. So it's a 47 point lead for Coburg at three quarter time in the 88 grand final. Phil Cleary addressing his troops. One more quarter of football for the season. <coughs> Will they be the Premiership side? We'll find out shortly, but after the football today, we've got a highlight for you, the 1988 Puma Otway Classic. Steve Monaghetti, now in Seoul, comments on Australia's most gruelling foot race. Mainly it's toughness, of course, and uh, I'm a bit of a person that likes a challenge, so it certainly is a challenge. The course is tough because there's so many hills, and the competition is tough. And you have, as well, a, a, a team competition, which is unusual in running because it's a fairly individual sport so I enjoy the social side of it as well. Join Olympians Steve Monaghetti and Brad Camp for the Puma Otway Classic today at five o'clock. Well that's one to look forward to. I wonder who's going to enjoy this last quarter of football even though his team have a 47 point lead it's going to be nail biting time for Phil Cleary. Look at him stalking around there like a caged lion in amongst his team. Not saying a lot to them yet, letting them get their breath back, but what a magic quarter. Sam, was it a match-winning one? I'm quite adamant it was, Peter. I, you know, at half-time I was still undecided as to the outcome, but I really believe that uh, Coburg, you know, pulled out all stops in that quarter. It was the Premiership quarter, and to a man here we see Terry being consoled by the match committee there's obviously consoled or consulted well consoled and consulted well that wouldn't be consoled at this point in time be consulted as to see how he can extract himself out of this rather large hole that they've got themselves into and really i can't see you know what they can do you have any suggestions for him peter whiteman eight goals is a, a big margin to pull back at this stage of a grand final um, it's very difficult. I think all he can ask his players to do at this stage is to become more committed to get possession of the ball. And when they do get possession, they've all got to be around the ball and, and create more options for the player with it. They look to be very, very um, individual, as I've said before. The last little bit of play there was typical of, of the situation they find themselves in. Rayburn was running down the ground, didn't have a player moving forward to take possession to, to kick the ball to. Grant Smith was running back into the goal square, and it's practically impossible to kick to a player leading backwards. And uh, consequently, what happened, uh, the, the ball was kicked into the man on the mark because Rayburn uh, had to have two or three thinks about the situation. I think it's just a matter of going in a lot harder, getting more numbers around the ball and taking a lot of risks. Here's Barry Round talking to his men while Terry Wheeler has uh, a cons consultation with the match committee. Well, Pete, we're going to be assured of a couple of things. The old war horse, the two war horses there, Terry Wheeler and Barry Round, they certainly won't be, you know, giving in right to the final siren. They'll be battling away and plugging away and you know, who knows? But, you know, I'm quite adamant Coburg have done enough and they will continue to do enough in this last quarter to ensure the 88 flag remains firmly entrenched at Bell Street. Well, it's a bit like the 86 grand final, isn't it? An eight-goal term from Williamstown to one from Coburg set them up to the road to victory. They ended up winning by 13 points. The shoe is on the other foot today. So will we see, uh, correspondingly, a fight back from Williamstown? Well, it's quite conceivable. I mean, to say, during the course of the year, we've been fortunate to witness some amazing... Amazing turnarounds and comebacks by Williamstown. Traditional never say die attitudes always been prevalent at Willie, but I just believe that Coburg have got so much at stake. But apart from all the anomalies, I mean to say most importantly, they're playing very, very well. And some of Terry's moves in that third quarter I was absolutely mystified by. I felt that, you know, there was one decided factor in this game that was quite evident, and that is the fact that Coburg had got an advantage in pace. Now why 
it's beyond my comprehension why he would alternate players of the caliber of Smith, players like Rayburn and uh, Kyle. Kyle in particular, who was also playing reasonably well. They're running players who they need desperately around the base of the pack. And once they have been negated effectively during the course of the game by Coburg, but once they were off the ground, you know, gave Williamstown almost no alternative or possibility of getting back into the game, Peter. Do you agree? I do, Sam. I agree. Uh, I think the players like the round need to get more out of themselves at this stage. They're, they're the players that have lifted uh, <coughs> Williamstown in the past performances, and I think uh, that's what they'd be needing. They'd be needing a big effort from Barry Round, and I, I think perhaps uh, get the runners around him rather than have the two big guys on the ground at the same Well, we've time. been through it a hundred times before, haven't we, pal? But I mean to say, eight goals down, three-quarter time, a grand final. You know, what do you say? You know, you throw discretion to the wind, take a chance and see what evolves. Well, let's look at this third quarter from Coburg, a sensational one. Seven goals, six they kicked. And here was the one goal from Williamstown, Barry Round doing it out of the ruck. That was the first one. That brought him within seven points, Peter. Here we see this bouncing ball. Oh, that's a great object, that piece of leather, isn't it? Coburg won it more than Williamstown. There's Terry's indiscretion kicking back into play. The unattended Rennett. He had a fantastic oh, quarter. 14 think. possessions for the quarter, Peter. Stunning. And in fact, some 30-odd for the match. He's really been a surprise packet. But just look at the way that ball's just being drilled forward. The pinpoint accuracy. They've always got players, you know, twos and threes. And there we see another goal registered for the Burgers. Clever knock on here. Yes, we're the waiting arms of Weatherall. One bounce. Well, Vinnie Taranto, we see on screen here, has made a bit of a made quite a difference to Coburg, knocking the ball effectively on to Rennitz, who's the well, is he going to enjoy himself tonight, Mr. Rennitz? Down there at the Coburg well, Club. There's a big night planned. He'll be lauded for a long, long time, will Tim Rennitz. Taranto getting his name on the score sheet as well. And uh, look, kicks were equal at half time. They're now 20 ahead, Coburg. They're well ahead in the marks department. They have been in front all day. Handballs, they've just been so pinpoint in their accuracy yes. from the Lions. And uh, free kicks really haven't had that much effect on it. Williamstown uh, having uh, the better of the umpiring decisions. Ross Booth has been down listening to the men in the middle. Thanks, Peter. Well, uh, Sam, by the look of the camps here, I don't think you'll have to take me to Honolulu. Williamstown looks shattered. Terry Will has put uh, Rickman in the centre. Kershaw will be uh, at full forward. Barry in the ruck. And uh, Phil Cleary really got Coburg together. I don't think we'll see them letting up. No, I think 1986 has been a fire burning in the lion belly for <laughs> two years now. They were red-hot favourites going into that one. And a quarter like we've just seen from Coburg killed off their chances. I don't think they'll want it to slip from them now. Right at it. Last quarter of football in the VFA for 88. Oh. And Rickmans on the ball, thumps it forward. Allison oh. to Sheldon, too slow. Rousel's tackle. Oh. Oh. Well, it's a huge task for the Seagulls, 47 points. But if they start to lift, then you can bet that this crowd will get right behind them. A lot of Western oh. Suburb supporters here at Windy Hill, of course, they wanted to see Sunshine in the second division get up, but uh, Oakley were far too good. Kennedy does it well against Rennitz. Martino, the target. Sheldon back to Langen. Kennedy to pump it forward again. Rickman looking to inspire them on the ball. Doesn't get his usual distance with the kick. Nilsson. Oh, wake up your mind. Sets it up for Kershaw. Was it touched? It's there! Nimmo misses it, and Nilsson gets the goal. Well, if they're going to lift, that's the sort of start that Terry would be hoping for. Goal in the first minute of play. And Nilsson, who's been relatively quiet all day. Well, the ball just floating with yes. the breeze here, and, and none of them judged it. 
But it's amazing when Round and Kirsch are in that full forward line, how much pressure it places, added pressure on the defence, because they're so conscious of their marking power that they sometimes do do exactly what they did then and misjudge the flight of the ball. Wiedemann to Ede. Conscious. Williams. Trying to get back here to put pressure on Del Rey. Interesting to note, Sam, that uh, the top uh, possession getter, Rennitz, has just come off the ground. Must be injured. Burke has gone on to replace him. Probably run himself ragged. I think that you're right, Sam. He looked pretty tired towards the end of that third oh, turn. No Interesting, though, to see an interchange made within a minute and a half of the restart. No, Ross, I was about to ask you, how did Phil look? Intense? Oh. <laughs> no Intense. comment. He gave no comment, but, uh, oh, fire. In great control, Phil Raise was. Up. Players, when he addressed them, stand up in front. Eyes, eyes at him. Really uh, fired up his Phil. But in control. Oratory presentation to the point. As always, you had the uh, Prime Minister in before the match. You had to... Oh. Be a little careful. Vinny Taranto now. Kennedy, good work. 41 points to Coburg. Three, four minutes gone in the final quarter, and Williamstown kicking with the breeze. Can they lift? Big Barry round. Kershaw sitting in the forward pocket now. Well, Coburg certainly won't be perturbed with this best sort of play. I'll be happy to spend the next half hour having the ball thrown in. Round against Reynoldson. Too strong for him. Murphy. Rayburn has to attack it. Well, his knock on almost came to Coburg's advantage. Pastore gets it to Rickman. Nilsson's his target. Another chance no, no, for Murray Nilsson, this time closer to goal and a standing start. No, I didn't hear it. I think the Coburg player saying it was touched off the boot. The umpire wasn't aware of that. Right there. I don't think he's allowed enough for the breeze. Oh. One very famous uh, Williamstown trainer thought that uh, Williamstown would be all right if Nilsson was off the ground. But uh, Well, he was beaten in the first half. Short to Brian Allison and Ingram. And haven't they worked the ball... Well, this ground similar in shape to their own home ground. Bell Street, Midler. He's done very little wrong. Oh, is that a pun? Oh, Kennedy, superb mark, but it was out, unfortunately. Over the line. Uh, Gee, I don't agree with that the decision. Second grab over the line. Second grab. Out of bounds, Umpire. The second grab is over the line, Mark. Mick Turner. The second grab over the line. But he so took it in one the grab, didn't he? Certainly a mark. Well, Michael Turner throws the ball in. Round wins it again. Good work. Oh, smothered off Murphy's boot. Hard to get easy kicks. Carl, look at that desperation. Rackavolus underneath the pack. The taggart feeds it out. Wheeler under pressure. Now it's fallen for them. Pastore finds Rickman. Has the move to the centre worked? So far it has. Oh, he threw that to Delray. Now to Rayburn. Russell. Ross! That's a bad one. Put Smith under pressure. Appealing for the free. Get on with the footy, Smithy. Sheldon gets it. Out to Langan. And away go the Burgers. Look at Weatherall. Loose in the pocket. There he is. He's about 70 metres out from goal. Williams leading to the pocket. Short. And the pass is dropped. That looked dangerous. Again, Williamstown not uh, picking up loose players anywhere near quick enough. That's Tim Rennitz. Cramp, perhaps. Just making sure he's not going to cramp, I think, while sitting on the bench, stretching himself. Well, that's a bit... Uh, right there, back two minutes. Inconsistent. They haven't paid those all day. Brown to the wing. Rayburn. Sheldon. Goes for the boundary line. And finds it. Barry Round asserting more authority on the game now, Sam. Yes, the first five minutes of this quarter. Well, that was a move by Peter Wells, chairman of selectors, who really Bye -bye. makes most of the moves of Terry concentrating on playing. Round into the ruck. Now Ede. 
Rakavolis. Oh, almost worked for him. McTaggart. Been relatively quiet too, McTaggart. Started Reasonable well, first it. half, yes, Ross. Too keen. Little Kakua preparing to come on the ground. That'll add a, add a bit of pace to Coburg's side. I don't know who's lost, oh. father or son. <laughs> Rakavolis. Tyler's worker too, Rakavolis. Hold it. Hold it. That's Kakua Hold preparing it. to come on. Wait. Did see a little bit of action in uh, the first term. Good player if his side's got first use of the ball. Very quick. Rayburn to Wheeler. Pastore in the centre. Open forward line. Kershaw, a little shove. The rover is Di Martino. The player coming off is Langer. The Carlton player taking his place on the bench while Billy Kakua goes up into attack. Or in defence. Defence it is. 19 oh. possessions for Langan. Off the ground from Carl. Oh, and for a behind. So Williamstown in this term have added 1 2. Coburg yet to score. We've played eight minutes. Is he Carl on screen? Started well, but not done enough for the Towners. Sheldon. Sheldon, it's Nemo. It's a long kick in. And Barry Round takes the mark. Chip short to Kennedy. One time defender. Has he the confidence to kick a goal? Very durable, big Barry, isn't he? He'll just keep going and going. If William Stan are going to get back in this game, they're going to need a big effort from him. Terry Well looking concerned at the back of screen. His fingers crossed for this shot at goal by Billy Mark Kennedy. But he hasn't let him down. That's an excellent goal, Peter, isn't it? Great Almost kick. the 50-yard uh, or 50-metre point. So the margin back to 33 points. Well, let's hope for the viewers and the, uh, the great crowd that's turned up here today and for the commentators that uh, this could be a bit of a resurgence for, for Williamstown and we uh, might have a closer game. Kennedy, because of his quiet nature, known as Rowdy, played here in the Essendon under-19s, and he knew exactly how to kick for that school end goal. On! 30 points the difference. It was 47 at three-quarter time. Gee, the pace hasn't eased at all, Peter, has it? But no. desperation still prevalent, both sides. Round and Wiedemann. Oh! Round's fist. There he is again, giving the first use. Yep. Can they take advantage? Ingram does well. Burke. Oh. Wheeler against Eid, and the tall man wins out. Harbinson. Williams is in front. Floating in there was Reynoldson. Murphy's pressured. Kakua, number 26, waiting for the scraps. Kennedy back in defence now. Di Martino out wide. He's got a man there. Smith. McTaggart inboard. Goes long instead. Ingram favoured. Oh, gets plenty of carry with that kick. Di Martino. Carl. Oh, they're mounting a comeback here. 11 minutes. Some nails being chewed there in the grandstand. Lindsay Carl from 40. Ross Boo's got his Honolulu <laughs> brochures out. A few nails being chewed here. We're not staying at the Royal Hawaiian, by the oh, way. Okay. 15th possession. Can Carl make it count? No. 32 points now. So a bit of tension back in the game. Still a two or three goal breeze blowing to the left of screen. The Seagulls kicking with it and they tend to finish strongly. Always find a target out of the fence, Peter, don't they? Very cool. Alan Ede, 11 marks to Alan Ede. Superb 100th game. Kakua! 
didn't quite bring it down. Vin Di Martino searching for Rayburn, keeps it in, centering kick. Oh, good mark, Gary Sheldon. Wide with a hand pass in board. Tarando thinks about giving it. Now looks for Reynoldson. Murphy will punch from behind. Good work to Reynoldson, brings it to ground. Great shot of those two, battling for possession. Now Burke in support. Oh, Delray was committed, he had to. Weatherall on the left foot, has missed. Margin back to 33 points. Interchange move being made. The man of the moment back on the field in Timmy Rennitz. Sheldon's Coming played off. a good game too. Yes, done nothing wrong, Peter. Oh, up high with Smith. Rayburn. Good 60 metre kick. Cool is Nimmo. Good 25 metre handball. Harbinson. Burke out on the wing. Goes to the boundary. Delivered. Will that be paid? If Taggart looks back. That's Peter Welsh who's made those moves. Gary Sheldon. Round against Angwood. Good Taggart. Rainmaker. Wiedemann went the fist. Sounds like there's a seagull running towards it by the crowd's reaction. It's Darren Rousel in the square. Kim Kershaw. And the seagulls at the 13-minute mark cut the lead to 27 points. Well, they're certainly working very, very hard. They're not giving in as we anticipated. But here we see it on screen. Great play here. He was aware that he had Kershaw unopposed in the goal square and very unselfish and disciplined play and Big Kimbo nonchalantly just pops it through. We have got a ball game on our hand. I think there's a few doubts creeping into Sam's mind about his prediction at three-quarter time. 27 points. And by Ross Walker. Beautiful bounce. Fire! Round wins it. Shark, though. Get the feet out. It should have been a free there as the foot went in. Kennedy backs back. Eve. Going for mark number 12. Cool work by Murphy, but dropped by Wheeler. He must be tight. Kaku with pace. Alan Ede running away from goal. Now he hooks it back. Too far into the square. Oh, past Dory. No, it's Delray. And he finds McTaggart on half back. Rousel leading wide to the centre wing. McTaggart goes over his head towards Nilsson. With Littler, with Ingram it is. Wiedemann. To Ingram. And this is a crucial time of the match, isn't it always? Carl, will it bounce favourably for Harbinson? No, for Di Martino. Out to Rayburn. Here's a go. Over to Bastori. Chips it for Smith and then Kershaw. Oh, and it didn't fall for Smith. Taranto, great work. Off to Nino. And now to Littler. And great work in defence by Coburg. Nothing much to kick to. Has to run with the football. Harbinson. And players look tired. Harbinson kicks long. Murphy diving mark at half back. Well, half the last quarter gone. They've cut the lead by 20 points, but given it away, Willie. Kakua, the recipient of a rare mistake from Glenn Murphy. Right there, Brett. Williamstown players looking around at each other instead of making a decision quickly. Williams, great bustling lead. No one was going to knock him off the ball. And David oh. Williams now passes oh. to Kakua. Oh. Couldn't get up. And Di Martino sees it over the boundary line. Well, we've seen everything here today, haven't we? They live to fight another day. But in all fairness to Williamstown, they're endeavouring to obviously get the ball moving quickly, which they have to to get back in the game. And obviously when you're doing that, mistakes will occur. Too much forward momentum, little Billy Kakua then. Couldn't find his centre of gravity. Uh, Allison's kick. Whistle for out of bounds. So throw in near the behind post. Well, the Mick Dundee right, says Coburg are home. Give it back. Throw it up. 27 points. 16 minute mark. Still time for Willie. Round. Beaten by Reynolds and Weatherall. Snap, yes! Oh. 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 
with nearly the well. Yeah. I was about to Two say moves. nearly the sealer now. Two moves, please. <laughs> it might well have been. That was uh, the cry of Sam's bank manager then, Mike Hall, thinking about supplying that trip to Honolulu for Ross Booth. Should Willie get there? I think he'd be yelling be more than crying. <laughs> Smith. Rennett's in good position. Oh. Top mark in defence. Flicks it out to Littler. Good tackle from Carl. Ball over the boundary line, I think. Well, finals are renowned, Peter, aren't they, for making players, and certainly Tim Rennett's will be long remembered for his contribution to Coburg's 1988 plight. Good players perform in finals, and uh, he's obviously a good player. Kennedy trying hard. Littler. As always, Coburg's hand passes find their mark. Angwin. Tag it at the back. Oh, he almost bred it. Brought in a beautiful mark. Williams. Back to Peter Burke. Kicking from the 50 metre line into the square. Reynolds in front. Di Martino at the back. Oh, whether all is he quick oh. enough? No, good tackle. Terry Wheeler will be caught. Oh. And finally, get out of trouble through Kennedy. Chips it to Murphy. Straight down the middle he goes. Look at Rayburn loose at half forward. Gets a nice bounce. No one in front of him. He's going to run in and shoot at goal for sure. No, he goes for the pass. It's good. Di Martino. And great player, Richie Rayburn. Great vision. Instead of selfishly endeavouring to shoot from an impossible angle, spotted Di Martino in the more central position and a better view to goal from 30 metres. It's a worried Prime right Minister. On it. Di Martino and the difference now back to 22 points. Did you say a worried look at the Prime Minister? Well, I said he was in the Coburg room before the match and... Uh, well, he's got to look worried about something. He certainly hasn't got too much to concern himself with back in Canberra. He's doing running well. along very nicely. Yeah, Speaking of running, Sam, the Williamstown side are doing a lot more of it now and uh, creating opportunities for themselves. Yes, I agree, Peter. Well, that's the task that confronts Willie. 22 points. Oh, Rickman. Taken away by Allison. Harbinson. Murphy can rebound. Give him something. Oh, he does it on his own. Draws the man. Kennedy out wide to Rickman. Pastore at half forward. The ball won't make him. Little Rayburn's the man. Beaten by Ingram. Well, I wonder if Sheldon wants to get back out there. They've endeavoured to keep all their men fresh Coburg by working the interchange during this last turn. So far, they've only kicked two behinds for the quarter. Williamstown have added four goals, three, but it's Rennets for Coburg. Getting them up over the middle. Williams, well down. Round! Doesn't matter. Murphy. Nice job! McTaggart. Seagulls fly forward. Kershaw down there. Good defence from Nimmo. The roving from Russell. We have a game on our hands. It all count, I think. First goal, first goal to Rousel. I'm sure we get there on time. Oh, what a game. I would think that Sheldon must have an injury uh, not being on the ground at this stage. Don't 16 points the difference for the Seagulls. They are making an interchange, Peter. But it's Langan coming back. What a long driving kick from McTaggart. And Rousel has done this all this season. At the bottom of the pack in the goal square. And snaps truly. Well, listen to that crowd. I said there was a lot of supporters from the western suburbs here. Can they bring Williamstown home? We've played 20 minutes. Smith with strength, done nothing much all day. Now he gets into the action. McTaggart or Taranto with strength. And Coburg use all their reserves of energy to fight that uh, attack. And they got the ball forward. That gentleman doesn't seem too excited. There's the time ticking over. Just three and a half minutes from time on. Charles Slade has organised the doctor for my vaccinations. For the trip, Barry Round. Long hand pass. Doesn't work. Kakua. Di Martino in front. Good effort. Held up by Reynoldson. 
Nilsson making a lead in the middle. He goes for Kennedy. The kick is good. Burke back, back, spoils well. Time to steady. Oh, it's going to stay in play. Di Martino again in front. And the umpire right on the scene there. That was out, I reckon. Good umpiring. Under pressure, too, that big crowd of the uh, stand there. Sell Ron Hurd stand. Boundary umpire Turner. Right on the spot. Yes, an intake of breath through clenched teeth. <laughs> What's going on down there? The crowd have found voice. Round, beautifully down to Carl, who's hit with everything. Let him up, let Rekha him Vales up. penalised. We've played 22 and a half minutes. 16 point lead is Coburg. Having kicked a goal in this quarter as Angwin knocks down only for Smith. Oh, He's going to get it back. Rickman in support. And they bounce for them. Ingram. Goes for the boundary. A lot of pressure now. Players, oh, on, is. players on both sides making mistakes. It's Langan who's been waiting to come on for a fair while now, Pete. Mm. Yes, I think they're having difficulty shifting anyone from the ground at this point in time. Alan Ede calling for the runner too. He must be tired or other. He's got to move up his sleeve. He's got short sleeves on, Ross. <laughs> There's uh, well, the Lord Mayor, Winston Mackacky. Yes. Well, in fact, no sleeves at all. Sleeveless jumper. Round and Wiedemann. Run! Wiedemann won that. Good one. Getting it forward. Angwin off the end of it. On the left foot. Oh, this is dangerous. Is it going to go through? Di Martino, well done. All clear. Oh, and uh, is that Alec Lindsay there in the goals who's uh, really Big putting coming. on the show? The difference, 17 points. Straight down the middle he goes. Here's Smith. <laughs> Wants to play on. Let him go. Williams. Let him go. Let him go. Equally adamant he Let won't. Him. Finally gets away. Oh, Pastore's on his own here behind the pack. Cruel bounce. Ingram, bit of desperation in that handball, didn't bother trying to find someone, went for the boundary, and it could be against Di Martino. Harvinson to take the free. Right there. The ABC out in force. Robbie Weeks on the left. Here's a go for Nimmo. Taranto. Oh, good chasing from Pastore, but Taranto beautifully done. Off the hands of Williams. Kakua, that explosive pace, leaves the ball behind. Uh, Reynoldson, caught high. Oh, oh then holding the ball. Up. Right there. Back a metre, back a metre. Robert Di Martino straight down the middle. Nelson didn't mark. Carl Goodrave, yeah. brilliant smother by Ingram. But Rayburn off the rebound. Shot on goal, yes! Richie Rayburn. Oh, player! Hit the post. Well, second time. How unlucky can I be? How unlucky are Williamstown? Oh. We're well, certainly peppering those goals, Peter, aren't they? 16 points. There's the a moment. sign when the goal umpire stood beside that post, but uh, just a little bit of time. Into time on. It would be a steal if the town has got up. Yes, 30 seconds at the time on, 16 points. Looking like a big task for Willie. Big kick out from Nimmo. Burke can get it on. Angwin. Being caught by Di Martino. Great chasing, Vinny. Murphy fends off Kakua. Round. Kennedy. Plenty of support. Vin Di Martino. Out wide, McTaggart. He can drive long. Sets it up. Kershaw. Rennett. He's just so cool in defence, even in this crisis situation, Coburg. Tremendous skills displayed under pressure by the Coburg defence. Nimmo. The captain, under pressure, other number 17, Pastore. Across the face. 
I love the officials under pressure as well. Umpire Alec Lindsay in goal. I think there's anyone here that's not feeling the tension and the pressure of this game. We've played 26 no, minutes no. 50 and Coburg taking all the Make time in the world. Clock doesn't start till it's kicked in though and here's Nimmo with it. What's he going to do? Defend looking for Ingram out wide. Pastore backing back. Di Martino punches away. That's Venn. And that boundary thrown will please Phil Cleary. George Tashnardi, marketing manager for the VFA. He's got the cup in his hand. Whose will it be? 15 points. Coburg looking good. One last effort from Williamstown through Roussel. Good tackle on him. Now England played a fantastic game. So is this fellow, Brian Allison, along the boundary. Crowd finding voice up towards Murphy and Williams. And Williams thumps it to the boundary line. Kakur can't control. There's fabulous Phil. He's come out of the coach's box, the glassed in area for the first time. Stalking the boundary line. Very persistent Coburg, still uh, tackling very well. Round wins the tap, Kakur Sharks. One out duel, Reynoldson held by Di Martino. This could be it. Not much doubt about it, even though Robert Di Martino argues. He had Reynoldson by the hand. And from the edge of the square, he should just about put the nail in the Williamstown coffin. Greg Reynoldson kicks his second goal, and what a timely one, their first of the term. And it makes things very difficult for Williamstown now. There's a right decision made too, Pete. Here we see it on screen. Di Martino holding on. And the resultant free kick saw the goal, which makes the difference. 21 points. Reynolds in a goal in the first term and the last. We've played 29 minutes. A gallant fight by Willie. Can they finish it off in a similar vein? It's Coburg who force it forward. McTaggart dispossessed. Round opens up spaces only for Coburg on, players. Brett, Campbell, Brett, 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 who's up? Alan, 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 Alan. We haven't seen Alan, much of this all day. Silly for it to happen now. Give me the ball. And I think the umpire Johnny, Johnny, is going to bounce Johnny, the ball to try and stem the tempers. Oh, it's Smith and Angwin going for it. The ball's, the ball's been bounced while all this is happening. The ball's here. The ball's here. And away go Coburg. Allison to Kakua. Reynoldson again. Out on the Thanks, full. Ducky. Well, that certainly stopped the fight. 30 minutes gone. It didn't waste much time either. It should be a shame now because it's been a magnificent contest. Shame to see something like this now, Peter. You tracked from it all. Certainly, Sam. I think the frustration's creeping in now from Williamstown. They can see that the game slipped away from him. Ingram. Shows it to the crowd, and a bit of a smile there at last. It's been a nerve-wracking last term for the Lions. They've held out. Wiedemann. He's playing keepies off at the moment, he and Ingram. <laughs> They've gained nothing from that exchange, but they won't matter. They've wasted 20 or so seconds on the clock. Too far out to score. Reynoldson! Played a very good game, Peter Reynoldson. Uh, not only from a centre half forward, true centre half forward player, but he's played very well in the ruck too. He's got quite a good leap, and he's uh, he's assisted Wiedemann in that area. Well, he's good. played a terrific uh, final series. Coming into the finals, his form's been very good. Sure, pair of hands, hasn't he? Burn my bed. Yeah. Oh, what a kick! Oh, Reynoldson, two in two minutes. And it's Coburg's flag, 21 and a half minutes gone. They lead by 27 points. Phil Cleary, 
The disappointment of 86 has been flushed away by a great performance from the Lions today. They've led at every change, weathered the storm from Williamstown, a gallant last quarter from the Seagulls. But Coburg now have it in the bag. Congratulations, Coburg, 27-point winners. Jubilation from Lions supporters. And what a drought they've broken. 79 saw their last flag. Before that, it had been 51 years, so they've been few and far between in modern times. First Division flags for Coburg. And aren't they going to savour this one? Phil Cleary, a very emotional moment for him. We've worked very closely with him all season. Congratulations, Phil. Congratulations, Coburg. Yeah, great side, Peter. He's worked very, very hard, as both you and I know. And he's had plenty of disappointments in recent years, and I'm hopeful that this will offset a lot of those, and I'm sure it will. And in fact, the whole Coburg side, they've worked very, very hard. A lot of guys behind the scenes that I personally know, Ken Davis, who's been a diligent worker and the main store behind the operation in conjunction with their president, Tripp, been some great guys out at Coburg and they've got their just rewards for all the efforts that they've put in. And Peter, I guess this is what football's all about, isn't it? September that last week, you know, you look at the hardships and the frustrations. King Cleary. Yes, Sam, I think uh, most footballers play for this particular moment and I was just thinking about it there when that last goal was kicked. Uh, great, uh, great feeling, there's no doubt about it. Well, of course, there has to be a vanquished, and today it was Williamstown. Gallant losers, and Ross Booth has their captain coach, Terry Wheeler. Well, Terry, uh, the shock of, uh, shock of it, a great comeback there, but uh, not quite good enough on the day. No, perhaps not, Ross, we weren't. Um, you know, credit to Coburg. But, you know, well, yeah. Yep, yeah, they were the better side on the day, and uh, yeah, it's very disappointing. We'll, save it. we'll stay here and we'll take all this in, and by Christ, we'll be back next year, mate. OK, well done. Bad luck. 86 winners, but not this year. And uh, you're right, take it all in. And uh, congratulations on the fine performance from Williamstown for the year. Thanks very much, Ross. Well, we're about to see the presentations. Of course, the Goss medal is to be awarded to the best player of field today. I don't think Coburg are too worried about who will win that. They've won what counts. The 88 ANA Cup. Cleary's in there somewhere. Someone else hoisted shoulder high now. Only momentarily. I think it was Brad Nimmo, the captain. <laughs> well, that's what you play football for, to take part in one of these, a premiership. I think it's credit to Coburg, the way they uh, performed. We saw it uh, religiously there when they come out of the back line. They, they came off at a right angle. They've been doing it for years. It goes back to when Colin Kinnear coached Coburg to a premiership um, earlier on. And, uh, you know, Phil's followed the lead there, and the players are very, uh, very committed to doing the one thing, and, and they do it very well. They know what each other are all about, and uh, their skill level is up to it, which that needs to be there as well. And uh, all credit to the way they teamed. I think they, you know, as I said before, earlier in... In the, uh, at the start of the game, Coburg are the side that, uh, that play the best team football, and that's one on the day. Yes, they've uh, led the competition for all but four rounds this season. They finished on top, a game clear, only beaten four times for the season, and they've gone on and won the big one. Before the presentations are made, I'll just run through the goal kickers. Three to Reynolds and two in that last turn. The only goals they got in the quarter in a two-minute burst. Three to Weatherall, three to Rakovolis and Rennitz. While for Williamstown, three to Rickman and two to Carl, their major goal kickers. Here's Charles Slade down at the presentation area. Ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful grand final of fitting uh, climax to a wonderful season. And here to present the... A&A Premiership Cup to the winning team, Coburg, is the Premier, John Kane. A great, a great win to Coburg, true champions, club champions, and won the grand final well. To Brad Nimmo, Phil Cleary, a great job, well done. Just about be their catch cry this season. 
And that's a, a heady brew that's been mixed up in the ANA Cup. And to present the ANA Man of the Match Award and the Norm Goss Medal, we have Mr Bill Jewell, Chief President of the ANA Friendly Society. Thank you, Charles, for that introduction. It is my pleasure to present Tim Rennitz. Tim, congratulations on being the man of the match. A great game, and it's even better that you're premiers. And also, I have the great pleasure of presenting you with the Norm Goss Award for the best player of the day. Quite an outstanding feat to win both. Congratulations, great game. Listen, um, just one minute. Shh. To all the, listen, to all the players, supporters, and all the fans of the club, it's a magical moment. I was on a special mission this year to my mum and dad, beautiful people. Mum and dad, let's party tonight. Let's party tonight. Beautiful stuff. scenes are going to be repeated and repeated at the Coburg Club Rooms tonight. There's a big barbecue on. Celebrations were planned. They may have been commiserations, but really from the outset, it always looked like being a celebration there tonight. Well, you've heard Phil acknowledge the support he's got from his family. Let's hear some more thoughts from the successful coach of the Premiers of 88, Coburg. Here's Phil Cleary with, with Ross Booth. Well, Phil, Sam said that if uh, Williamstown got up, he'd buy me a trip to Honolulu. He was a bit worried there. Were you worried in that last quarter? I was petrified. They're very hard to win. They're very hard to win. But I'm, uh, I'm overcome by the moment. It's just too hard to explain. Beautiful experience. What about this man next year, Tim Rennes? What a game by him. Magn yes, great player. Fantastic. Jimmy, what happened to go? Went off to get cramped, did you? Yeah, a little bit of cramp, yeah. Bit, bit weary there in the third quarter. But... The rest of a magnificent game. Thank you. Well great team effort. OK, Phil, what do you think about Williamstown's effort coming back there? Hey, me, me, me! Well, I'm not going to I'm not gonna rub salt in the wounds. They held the cup up at me two years ago. I won't be doing that. They fought a great fight. We were the better side on the year. And uh, on the day, I should say, in the year. So, bad luck, Terry. Well done. OK, that's all from down here. Peter, back to you. Thanks, Ross. Well, I'll just sum up on uh, Tim Rennett's game. I know we shouldn't individualise at this moment, but 23 kicks, 7 marks and 13 hand passes for him. He's won the uh, ANA Man of the Match and the Norm Goss medal, deservedly so, but uh, his team, all 18 of them, all men that have played uh, this season for Coburg, have certainly got an intimate knowledge of what the Yellow Pages look like today, as has uh, our Premier. They'll be celebrating tonight. Well done to Coburg. 16, 18, 114, defeating Williamstown, 12, 15, 18. 87, and in the curtain raiser, it was victory to Coburg. 50-point winners over Sunshine and uh, to uh, Oakley over uh, Sunshine. Coburg uh, winning two of the three flags they're involved in today. They lost the reserves but won the under-19. So a day to remember for them. Well, uh, that just about wraps up. VFA Football for 1988. It's been my pleasure to work with Sam Kekovich, Phil Cleary, Ross Booth and all the uh, ABC team throughout the year and to have Peter Waitman on board for the grand final. Pete, that's probably a site you'd like to be involved in come this time next year. We'll uh, be working hard at it. Thanks very much, Pete. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Terrific. Peter Waitman and Sam Kekovich. Tremendous, Peter. Just endorse your comments. Enjoyed it thoroughly. To all the crew, everyone that's worked, the technical people behind the scenes, a fabulous experience. And Paul Field, our statistician all year. Congratulations to him, his young daughter. He's missed a birthday party today, but <laughs> Dad's done a great job. <laughs> it's been uh, the place to be out here at Windy Hill this afternoon. We hope you've enjoyed the grand final from Essendon. And there it is, the ANA Cup belonging to Coburg. Until uh, next season.